Appropriations uh, Public Hearing to order. It is 6.55 on Wednesday, June 19th. Diane, uh, please take the roll. Karen. Here. Carolyn. Here. Dennis. Um, Diane, here. Gaddy, here. Linda, here. Tim. Let's please stand uh, for the Pledge of Allegiance. The Pledge of Allegiance. To the flag of the United, United States, States, States of America and, and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you all for coming. The purpose of this hearing is to allow the taxpayers of the Niles Main District Library to comment on the tentative budget and appropriations ordinance before it is made final. Um, we would uh, we require people to sign in for the public comments. Uh, we don't require them to give their addresses. Uh, comments are limited to five minutes. Uh, audience is not participating uh, with people who are making comments. Trustees do not have to reply to comments, but they can if they wish. And this session is for public comments only, not for public trustee discussion. All right, so uh, the first person on our sign-in sheet is Mr. Steve Doherty. Who do I stand today? Uh, you may stand here. Oh, okay. Or here, it doesn't matter, okay. either side. Whatever, right. whatever you call it. Good. Good evening, everybody. Uh, uh, I'd like to, first, I'd like to start out that I have read the building assessment report, which uh, has conflicting statements in regard to roof replacement. One section, the west area, recommends replacement because of puddling. I'm 40 years facility manager, and that is not a good reason to do that. Then the report states the west roof is in fair condition, and the east roof is in very good condition. And that third area is copper and does not need to be replaced. The report states that these roofs should be replaced by capital replacement plan. That's over a period of years, not immediately. So, why are we asking for $1.5 million to replace all the roofs? They do not need to be replaced at one time. I recommend that this $1.5 million be removed from this budget and put into a capital replacement plan. Uh, also, uh, Susan said in a meeting, we save money all the time. And Susan, please begin to report these savings to the board. Because all we hear, or all I hear as a resident, is spend, spend, spend. I'd like to hear a few bucks here or there. I understand that the library had a 60-year anniversary celebration that was invite only. I lived here for 45 years. How much was that? How much was spent on the celebration that I helped to pay for, but I was not invited? Why did the library increase the Capital One program, that's a newsletter, from four to six uh, times a year? I understand the publications are $7,000 an issue. I'd like to see this the Capital One be put back on the agenda to review and consider bringing it back to four times a year and save us a couple of bucks. They also use color and high gloss paper. Save us some money. Building maintenance costs 2,028, 2,228 and change. Uh, Susan, I'd like to sit with you with, and get more details on that. And maybe I can actually help you. Or make, be able to make suggestions. I have that back. I'm sorry, Steve. Could you say that again? I was taking notes. Yeah. yeah. Just that last one. Building maintenance cost, uh, 228593. I'd like to meet her with Susan to get more details on that. Sure. I'd like to be able to help her if I possibly can. I won't guarantee it, but I have a strong background in facility management. I recommend a committee, I recommend that a committee be set up to review next year's contract with residents included. I've seen this process, this budgeting process, go through two meetings, it's post for 30 days. It's a rush, rush, rush from my point of view. I think we ought to slow down 
and look at things a little more closely and work with the village, or excuse me, work with that library to help them give it the best service they can at, at, at a reasonable price. Thank you. Thank you, Steve. Uh, next person on our list is uh, Danette Matthias. Yes, I have a budget. It is for the budget. No, it should have been the other one. Okay, you don't want to speak now? No, not for the budget. Marcy, could you give me another time, please? Or get to your grade or something. Okay, then for budget, uh, the next person on our list is uh, uh, Mr. Carabota. Thanks. I thank Carabota Niles, Illinois, and also a main township trustee. Four year look back. Year 2015, your spending was $5.9 million. Year 2016, your spending was $6.8 million. Year 2017, your spending is $6.9 million. 2018, your spending is $7.3 million. Your spending now proposed is $8,416,671 or in that ballpark. An increase of one million, about a million hundred fifteen thousand a year. Main Township, we just abated back to taxpayers a refund of levy of $1.25 million. It's extremely upsetting all the hours and time, days and effort that we put forth to streamline our budgets at Main Township serving over 135,000 residents in many regards, only to have that, that $1.25 million sucked up by the Niles Main Library Board. We need to stop, just stop it. Now I've been here before, I was here in 2015, I was here in 2013, I was here in 2017 and I predicted it. And I predicted that we're gonna hit $10 million. You have to look around your village you drive through our village, you see empty shopping malls. You see a lot of areas that are having trouble. You see homeowners that are leaving. And there was a suggestion at this last meeting that maybe we should have a study because there was a, it was presented that the uh, state of Illinois is having a negative budget problem because of pensions, because of all these various 7,000 bodies of government, because of all this spending. There should be a study. A study costs money. I suggest you just go online to Wirepoints. Wirepoints is a research group that puts together all those articles and you will see it. You'll see the, the, how people are leaving the state because you won't stop. And the reason why you won't stop is because you think more programs is what I want, is what's best for the people of Niles and you're wrong. This is not a community center. I never voted to build a community center. We have a library. This is supposed to be a library. There is no reason why this library should operate to close to $8.5 million a year. And what we do as trustees of the township, we tell our departments what we need to see because the taxpayers can't afford it anymore. And they come back to us. That's what they're paid for. It's what we have salaries for. And they come back with those, guess, those, those uh, changes. And we make those changes. We just finished our budget. Again, and there are other governmental bodies, not just Maine Township, that's doing it. You're not getting the message. Well, maybe you get the message from Warren Buffett. We may know Warren Buffett. Nice guy, kind of knows his stuff when it comes to finances. He came out and said and publicized he would never open a business now in Illinois. Never. He also would never keep a business here in Illinois because of all of this outrageous spending. So we got to stop it. The only other answer, when it comes to this, this library, because I'm talking to the wall, the only other answer is that this board be merged into the Village of Niles board, and the Village of Niles handle the library finances. We can combine two governmental bodies into one. We don't need all this duplication, and I'm the sophistication and effort that's put forth when it comes to budgeting is at a much higher level at the village of Niles than here. Not because you're not capable, but because you're not doing it and you won't do it. I'm hoping I'm wrong. I don't want to see this budget pass. I want to see this budget cut. Thank you. Thank you, Dave. Our next uh, speaker is Stephen Yassel. <laughs> Stephen 
evening, Lord. Um, I just um, have been watching some of the online meetings over the past few months. And uh, last time I was here, um, I was talking about something different than the budget. So I guess I'll address that at a different time. But um, I'm curious to, as to how much of the budget actually goes toward the procurement of the current collection or catalog of books that we have, the maintenance of keeping those books within the library, and what constitutes books to be removed from the library. And my hope is that if we have reference books that haven't been checked out in years, I wouldn't want that to constitute a removal of those books. Um, people's taste in history changes all the time, and it could be a student in school that needs to do research on a specific historical figure or a specific era, and they need to find the resources. I really hope that they think of this library first. So um, my only concerns right now about the budget is that we're properly taking care of the collection that we have and that we're able to provide it for the generations. Thank you. Thank you. Our next speaker is Mr. Joel McCullough. I got a, uh, through printing of information, I got a copy of the uh, <clears throat> engineering facility report from April of this year and um, I want to quote from uh, the analysis there it says the engineer says the building and site indicates a consistent and routine investment in maintenance and upkeep the facilities are in excellent condition with no signs of major problems or neglect other than long-term items okay I'm concerned about the roof you have a million one set aside in the budget, which is the problem we have why this budget is way over here. The library has three different roofs. They can, they can classify them as east, west, and a copper tower. The assessment and condition of the east roof is good, and no maintenance or repair is needed. The assessment of the west roof is fair, and that is because it needs flashing repairs, which is a regular maintenance of sealing the perimeter of the roof. A small part of the roof under the chiller is beginning to deteriorate because of condensate probably inside the building in the area of the refrigerant line from the freeze from the uh, chiller. The cold refrigerant is going back up into the chilling unit and it's causing condensate. And this is not this they claim shouldn't be a problem for three to five years, maybe even more. It may not even cause any leaks, it's just that the condensate is there and it makes the roof a little bit soft. And the, the softness is insulation under the roofing material. Um, in this case, only the area under the, if, the, if this should go and start leaking there, uh, only the area under the chiller needs to be replaced. This is a rubber roof. These can be cut out, insulation replaced, and that section can be put in and bonded, only that one section. So that's the only section of concern in this uh, west roof. Um, this would cost only a fraction of a complete roof. The problem is actually the insulation under the uh, uh, chilling unit. Nevertheless, the engineer doesn't call for a need for any possible roof replacement for three years or more at the earliest, and it could be much more. This is for the west roof. There's no problem now. Just routine maintenance has, has been going on and has been budgeted for. The copper tower roof is assessed to be in good condition and regular maintenance should prevent any problems for at least 10 years or longer. Okay, therefore the 1.1 million in the budget for roof replacement is a big fraud on the taxpayers for four reasons. The roof is not needed at this time and the engineers can't say exactly when the foreseeable future a new roof will be needed. Maintenance on these roofs is already budgeted for. Number two, the $1.1 million budget number is at least $1 million over what it would cost for the entire older west roof, and which doesn't need replacement now anyway. Number three, 
the $1.1 million estimate was gotten with, for this budget. No estimates were gotten for this budget increase of 16% initially, but I gave you a list of six, six roofing contractors that provided bids for a similar roof on the ice arena and the park building adjacent to it on Ballard with a bid of $102,000 accepted by the Park District. The board admitted they had no real estimates, but full speed ahead passed this, this million-dollar mistake in their budget, all the time knowing there was a million-dollar error in it. There are reserves set aside for these already, um, for these already, and no funds should be budgeted for this. What's really happening here is this part of Cook County was reassessed and the appraised values were increased by about 16%. This could be a windfall for the library if they could grow their budget and tax levy, and that's what's going on with this bogus capital budget. This is fraud and malfeasance on the part of some or all, and ignorance on the part of others, period. This, you must cancel this fraudulent budget now and pass an honest budget no greater than last year's budget, plus an inflation rate of 2% or less. If not, then you should extend and continue to operate on last year's budget until an honest budget could be passed. Let's take this out of the budget so there's no chance taxpayers can be hit with a possible tax levy increase in November. Uh, if you, if the, the truth is I don't think the taxpayers trust this board and I think if they knew what was going on this room would be filled and the hallway would be filled too. Thank you. Susanna, did you want to speak at this meeting or the next one? This one. Next person is uh, Susanna Tantz. Thank you. Well, is there a time limit? Yes. Five minutes. Five minutes. Thank you. How do you pronounce your last name? Caraborn. Okay. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. I have utmost respect for this library. It's a great library. The board seems to be operating the way it should. And it's one of the nation's best libraries. I don't know how many libraries in Illinois have that rating. This one does. And thank God for it. And we're going to keep it that way. And it takes some money to have the best library. And many other students from other suburbs come here. I know if you want to get an A on your research paper, you better come here and use their books. Their books are up to date. They are outstanding. And this is the library you come to to get an A on your research paper. I know that. And we're going to keep it that way. We have to do more for the employees of this library. I know there's an IRMF. I don't know everything there is to know about it. But I know if this library does not take care of the employees, we are not doing the right thing. So 3% of the budget needs to go for their pension. Otherwise, we're ripping them off. Now, based on what Mr. Caraboa said, a good pronunciation? Yes, perfect. Okay. I don't think that Niles Ward should put its two cents more than two cents, operating this library. You have enough to do taking care of maps. Okay? And you don't always do a good job. Okay? And it's not all their fault. We're ripped off by the capitalist system, and I've been talking about this for 15 years, and I know what I'm talking about. Until the index is S&P Dow Jones, and as they get out of our way, we are ripped off, Niles is ripped off, all towns and cities and counties and states and countries and people and individuals and families are ripped off. We want to be paid according to the true profitability of these billion and trillion dollar corporations and banks. All stockholders gain the same rate of profit and bonuses. This will be plenty of money for Niles Library, the village of Niles. Families will have enough money to put their kids through college, pay for their health insurance, 
Why do you think there's a problem with measles? Because families don't have enough money to take their kids to the doctor. And there's millions of people like that. We've been ripped off too long, and it's not this big mouth that can do it alone. We all have mouths, and they better be open, and they better be talking to your politician, because they're going to be seat soon. They're going to be given two weeks' notice in each house, representatives in the Senate, and if they do not vote yes, you leave. The next time that that House or Senate is in session, they will not be able to come back. That's the only way to stop this runaway train and their garbage, and if it's garbage, it needs to be thrown out. All uh, tax loopholes closed, the wealthy pay tax. What is this Trump? You think you're going to get your air traffic controllers to work free for free? Okay, and there's a lot of them like that. The richest don't pay taxes, so we're going to clean that up. And if they don't vote yes, they don't come back. And um, <coughs> there's another few issues that should be in that category. No assault weapons sold to the public to ensure domestic tranquility. Going to general welfare is state the Constitution. If you don't do that, you're not following the Constitution. You don't belong here. I don't know what you're following. If it's garbage, it's going to be thrown out. I'm Suzanne Tennis, running for U.S. Congress, 9th District. Democrat to clean it up. If you want to help me get signatures, let me know. I'm in Niles Library under Herbert Tannis, my father. But I'm going to make sure it's going to be cleaned up. The Niles Library deserves to have its budget passed. I have utmost respect for the people sitting in this room, including Susan Lundke. But she needs to take care of the Niles employees first. And I don't care how much they're getting from IRMF and their own contribution, it's not enough. 3% of every budget is to vote for the employees' pension. Otherwise, you rip them off and do it. And I will not tolerate it. I've been talking about this for five years. Take care of the employees, put that in next year's budget. It's not this year. Thank you. Thank you. And please do what I'm telling you because I'm not here for my health. Thank you. Uh, no further comments? Okay. This meeting is adjourned. It's 7.23 uh, p.m. on Wednesday, June 19th. Uh, Diane, would you please take the roll? Uh, Karen. Karen. Carolyn. Here. <coughs> Diane. Here. Katie. Here. Here. Okay, before we start uh, the regular portion of the meeting, I do have an announcement. Uh, I was contacted by uh, Trustee Dennis Martin uh, and announced that uh, he regretfully informs us of his decision to resign his position from the Library Board, uh, Niles Main uh, Library Board of Niles uh, Main District Library, effective immediately. Uh, he says, my other commitments have become too great for me to be able to fulfill the requirements of my position on the board, and I feel it is best for me to make room for someone with the time and energy to devote the job to the job. Serving on the board has been a fulfilling learning experience for me that I am grateful for, and I regret to have to move on to other things. Uh, if I can be of any assistance during the time, I will take, uh, I will take the full position. Please don't hesitate to ask. So we want to extend the thanks to uh, Mr. Martin, the, the Trustee Martin, for the time that he was able to spend on the board. And uh, yes, we thank him for his time. And we regret that he had to uh, leave this position. Uh, we will discuss our procedures for going further, uh, further uh, to fill our position in the other portion of our agenda tonight. Okay, do I hear a motion to approve the minutes uh, of the special board meeting of May uh, 20th, 2019. Mm -hmm. Second. Uh, Karen. Daddy. Uh, Diane, would you please take the roll? Uh, I'm sorry. Well, first, we do the changes. Right. Uh, any discussion? Yeah, any discussion on the minutes of that uh, meeting? Uh, 
Okay, so, okay, let, uh, let's, let's take one second on this too. What I'd like to implement is some procedures, and we're gonna talk about that at another meeting, but I think I can implement them uh, as we move forward. So uh, I think we can all agree that our meetings have been a little uh, more energetic than we would like at times. And I think if we implement some uh, procedures that maybe we can control that. What I'd like to do is uh, first, uh, when we have a discussion, start with the first one who made the motion and then go systematically around the room until each trustee has had their opportunity to speak. And let's uh, see if we can limit the discussion. Let's, let's try it. Uh, as Steve had said a couple of times, we can try something. If we don't like it, we can change it. Uh, so let's try uh, maybe limiting the four minutes or so for each person. If that doesn't work for us, we can um, try it again. So at this time, we can start our discussion in the minutes. And uh, Karen has made the motion, so we can start with there. Any changes on the uh, minutes for uh, the special board meeting? No. Thank you. Patty? Uh, okay. No. Diane? No. No. Linda? No. Carolyn? Um, well, actually, I noticed that um, the minutes consist of the fact that the budget was presented and then we had an ordinance that was up for vote. So there isn't, there aren't any details regarding the budget that we discussed in the minutes. And um, I know for a fact that there were many questions and comments made by myself and Trustee Martin. Um, and I also requested information, although it was denied, but none of these budget issues are listed in here. So where is it that our discussion for our budget was noted? Again, we lack the um, accurate account of the summary. So did we not intend to mention our budget in our minutes? Do you have a recommendation for any changes? Well, I would like the questions and the comments to be included. There were several. I mean, I can send you an email, but I'm just wondering why we jumped from we had a board meeting to then we voted. We didn't talk about, I'm sorry, the budget. We didn't talk about the budget meeting in the minutes. I mean, I questioned pricing or costs for strategic planning just to start off the meeting. That's not in here. And there were several other things. So what's our, what's our purpose here? Because we missed the information about the budget meeting in the minutes. So I would gladly send you an email if that's what you're asking, but we really can't approve minutes if they're void of the entire meeting. Anybody else have a comment on that one? Um, Open for suggestions. I think the minutes are supposed to be a summary of what happened. There is a recording of the meeting which and it was everything that every person said during that meeting. I think the, sum, the minutes are a fair summary of what took place at the budget meeting on May 20th. Did I miss something? But can you point out where the summary is? I don't see it. It is a fair summary, which is all that, uh, the, that is required of minutes. Just a, a quick summary of what took place at the meeting. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Andy, any comments on that? I'm trying to not get too many comments. Please. No, I, yeah, as many as you want. The, the, the question is open to us that do we feel that this is a fair uh, summary of what I happened think on the end. We can discuss it. We'll be five minutes before. Uh, some of them are kind of like long winded. This, you know, they're trying something different. I think as long as they are available online, as anybody has access to it, you want further information. Yeah, I agree. Uh, it does say that we talked about the proposed bit, um, budget, the year, it, I mean, it's just a general this of what we did. It doesn't have to be specific. It should be an accurate summary. There's no detail. I understand what you're saying. Um, but we are making the decision as a board on these things. 
So uh, let's call. Um, I would like to then ask if you could include in the minutes my statement, which was made regarding our budget meeting. Uh, that wasn't in included in the minutes either. Could you read the statement, please? Sure. Um, I have a concern and want to make sure that the message we are sending to staff is certainly not one that the administration or this board takes lightly the cost on residents to support this library. Although a staff person stated we're not interested in decreasing, we should always be interested in reviewing our costs because you can always do something better for less money. But if our staff feels they're not interested in decreasing costs because this becomes a battle, then we are not presenting the budget process correctly. Uh, I don't have an issue with including that statement on this particular uh, board meeting minutes. Karen? Uh, accept changes. I don't think they're necessary, but I'll accept them. Daddy? Same here. Daniel? I accept it. Linda? I'll accept it, but I don't agree with it. Okay. Because I just don't really feel that we need to put in all the quotes that everyone makes all the time. However, fine. We need an accurate summary of our meetings. This is an accurate summary according to me. However, I'm fine with that. All right. Do you yeah. need a copy of this for the secretary? Uh, we will need it for Diane to need it in order to put it in. Thank you. Thank you. So how do I state this? Uh, is mandated, is amended. Uh, do I have to ask for another motion? No, uh, I agree with one and the second one accepts the changes. Yeah. All right. So now we just vote. Right? We just vote. Uh, can I have uh, um, a vote on the amended changes to our uh, minutes of May 20th? Yeah. Yes. Carolyn? No. <laughs> Diane? No. Yes. Linda. We're just voting on yes. approval. We're voting on the okay. agenda with, with Carolyn's okay. addition to it. Okay. Are we voting on my addition or yes. on the minutes? Yes. On the minutes, oh, on the minutes with your I'm sorry. Addition. I'm approving my addition, but I'm not approving the minutes. Oh, I'm sorry. I was We're approving the addition. We're, we're voting on oh, so the minutes with my, your addition. Okay, so I'm approving the addition, yes. Well, well there's not a vote to approve the addition. We've all agreed that the addition would be on. Well, I'm now, just, I'm, I'm but, voting I, 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 yes. You're voting but yes. But I want to clarify, I'm only approving my comp, my paragraph. Carolyn. We're That's voting. my Carolyn, comment. Carolyn. Do whatever you want. Uh, but she's not listening to what we're voting on. I know exactly what you're voting on. What are we voting on? I think the minutes are incomplete, but I'm voting to have my paragraph added. That's my comment, so my answer is so yes. So you want your voted paragraph added, but you're not voting on the minutes to approve the minutes. I just did. If you want to make a big deal out of this, no, I'm, 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 I'm confused as what you're voting on. I, I know. Confusion runs rampant in uh, Yes, it does. But my answer I, is yes. All right. Uh, I'm sorry. Linda, what did you vote? Vote oh, no. You voted no. You know what? I'm going to vote no, too. So the minutes are not approved. The minutes are not approved with, as amended. As amended. But the regular the regular minutes. The way they were written. Yes, the way they were written. Well, I hope that makes you all feel good. <laughs> we didn't vote. All right. We didn't vote on Let's the regular one. Take you another. Vote on the regular one. You all right. The all right. So. You have, to, you have to have approved minutes of yes. this meeting, so you'll have to vote again on the minutes. All right. I will ask. Uh, do my motion. Yes, thank you. Approve the minutes of May 22nd, 2019. Thank you. Second. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. You're right. Yeah, right. Everyone, we're going to have a first meeting. Sir, we second, please. Excuse me. I'll second it. Okay, thank you. Diane, please uh, step in. Okay, Karen? Yes. Carolyn? No. Diane? To approve as they as they originally were. Yes. yes. Patty. Yeah. Linda. Yes. Yes. All right. Do I hear a motion to approve the minutes of the regular board meeting of May twenty second, two thousand nineteen? So moved. 
Darren uh, Osak. All right, any changes? Darren? No. Patty? No. Diane? No. Linda? I wasn't here. You weren't here. Okay, thank you. Carolyn? Um, yes. yes. I noticed um, in the board minutes under the director's report. I'm sorry, what page are you on? Page 8. You included Susan Lemke's comments and um, Trustee Martin and, an, and I both commented that her um, statement that we were offending staff wasn't our intention and we clarified exactly what our position was with the issue um, at the budget meeting. But you didn't include that, you just included her paragraph. So I was just wondering why, because again we need an accurate account of what was discussed, you excluded my explanation and Trustee Martin's, which indicated we were not, we didn't have any issues against staff. We were, we were discussing the issues with our budget, or lack of information for our budget. So once again, you excluded that. Do you have a change that you're asking for? If you'd like me to submit one, I can email it to you, but I don't know that this board will approve it, so once I know what your position is, I'll be glad to email those comments. I, I'm, I'm sorry. What Are you proposing any changes to these minutes at this time? <coughs> I'm, I'm stating that you eliminated my comments and Trustee Martin's, and I'd like them included. Well, unless you have them here. I, don't I haven't typed them up because they're quite lengthy. There's, yeah. There were quite a bit that was said. So, I mean, if Susan's paragraph can be entered where she claims that her staff would be offended because of what was said, we just tried to clarify that and you eliminated that. When you say you, who are you talking about? Whoever is approving these minutes or, or approved the writing of these minutes. Well, we haven't approved it yet. So well, sure. somebody d dictated these or somebody transcribed them. Uh, well, so no, somebody the thinks they're them. correct. So I, I'm not sure how we do that. Well, they're not transcribed. They're selectively typed. So nothing's in here that you want to change, except you just want to add something. Is that what you're saying? Yes. Once again, you eliminated my statements and trustee marks. So if we eliminated uh, the paragraph starting with Ms. Lemke commented, would that suffice for your objection? The first paragraph, yes, because it's, it's not accurate in terms of our position. Sure. I do not have an objection with that. Anybody have an objection with that? Uh, in the movement, movement uh, I think the minutes are correct as written. However, in an effort to move this along, I don't have any objection to that particular paragraph being removed. Okay. I have no. Diane? I don't uh, agree with removing a paragraph that I mean, I agree on that, but to move this along. Okay. If you don't, don't like it, fine. Linda? Okay. Um, yes. All right. Uh, Carolyn, do you have any other um, uh, additions or subtractions from the minutes? Uh, no, that was it. Great. All right. Can I have a motion to approve the amended minutes? of the regular board meeting of May 22nd, 2019. We have a motion already. Yeah, I accepted the minutes. All right. Uh, Diane, could you take a roll call? Karen? Yes. Carolyn? Yes. <coughs> Diane? Yes. Linda? Yes. Diane? Yes. Linda? Um, no, no, no. Oh, Is that saying the same? Yes. Yes. Alrighty, thank you. Uh, has anyone registered for public comments for this portion of the meeting? Oh, uh, I thought Susanna was for the. Oh, 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 I'm sorry. All 
All right. Um, again, uh, when addressing the board, speakers will be limited to five minutes for a registered individual, 30 minutes for overall, and speakers must maintain a professional demeanor. Our first speaker is Mr. S uh, Steve Dar. Here's my observation of this board after attending six out of seven monthly meetings. This board does a lot of good things for our community, and I appreciate their hard work. But the administration needs to do a better job managing the budget and programs offered by the, by the library. Administration, for the past 20 years, the library has contracted the same company to perform state requirement, state required audit. Last year, the library paid about $18,000. Finally, this year, uh, they set out the contract for bid. Recently, the board approved a new contract for the same for the services for less than $10,000. In my opinion, as a taxpayer and a background in business management and common sense suggests this administration do properly manage their contracts. I suggest the board and administration consider longer term contracts to lower cost and with a 30-day cancellation term without penalties. This allows the library to get out of the contract if needed. With these two suggestions, I guarantee you'll save taxpayers money and get a bit and get better service for from the vendors. I've asked this several times in the board does not take any action. Respect. On May 20th board meeting, board member, I'm just going to use the first names, Patty called board member Caroline the P word. Then she said, I should have said that. I'm sorry. I actually meant it. Then slammed the papers down on the desk. That's respect, folks. And that's wrong. And did you also mention what Ms. brought it up? I believe it's... Okay, go ahead, talk. It's my time? Yes. Thank you. Respect. Outburst on May 22nd board meeting, board member Tim and Dennis were discussing Carolyn's request to add comments to the minutes. During this discussion, Dennis lightly tapped Tim on the shoulder. Tim then yelled out as if he was being attacked, do not touch me. The meeting was stopped to allow the board to calm down. And now Tim is the uh, board president. I find Tim to be very combative and sometimes borderline bully. Meeting minutes. In the past, trustees have been allowed to add and make corrections to, to meeting minutes before approval. At the May 27th meeting, President Karen denied her request. So I'll try to repeat her request. Uh, I'll try to repeat that re request because it, it, uh, it's in regards to public comment policy. No, the company, the library had reached out to other libraries to get feedback on their policy in order to update ours. Caroline stated as follows, Director Karen, the 31 libraries contacted were, were in outlying areas, which are not representative of our population and or scope. I contacted uh, local libraries that currently allow residents to provide public comment throughout the meeting. They were Park Ridge, Glenview, excuse me, Park Ridge Library, Glenview Library, and Northbrook Library. I agree with Caroline. The board recently updated a public policy that only allows the public to speak once, which is right now. The main reason uh, and the main reason I heard, we'll be here till 10 o'clock. That was the complaint. That was most of the advice that you got the board members again. <laughs> I have been here for six of the meetings. 
We have never kept you here till 10 o'clock. In fact, the meetings were mostly me, another time two people, another time three people. That's all we've had in attendance. I don't think we're going to keep you here till 10 o'clock. Can you be surprised how little comments that we would have? So I asked this, this board to put it back on the agenda and give us a voice. We matter. <coughs> I have one more suggestion. I'm sorry, your time is up. Time it's is up. a minute to. No. Nope. I'll take it uh, off the first. No. Okay. See what it says? Time is up. Well, do you want the rules applied every, equally to everybody or just special for you? Wow. I'll read it down. Wow. That's fine. Well, as a bully, I take it on my pride. Katie, do you want to respond to uh, Mr. Doherty's that comment? You know what? I was responding to the fact that Carolyn was, in my opinion, bullying a staff member, even though she feels that particular staff member isn't a staff member. Does that allow you to call her? No, 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 no. I this said is, I was sorry. This is allowing her to come up. Okay, I said right. I was sorry. I used enough. the word. But in my opinion, that's how she was acting. We are not allowing us, uh, okay. the public to discuss. Okay? And that's I realized I was wrong that I shouldn't have used the word. Daddy, yeah, okay. apologize. All right, okay. and as far as my uh, conduct with Dennis, he has uh, done that before to me. It was a very patronizing uh, movement. I had told him not to do it. Uh, and at that time, uh, maybe I lost my temper a little bit. Mm -hmm. Uh huh. Well, it happens, right? Mm -hmm. But when somebody uh, touches me like that in a threatening manner, as I, I took it to be threatening, it is my prerogative to decide how I react to this sort of thing. And I told him not to do it, pure and simple. So I'm sorry you thought I was bullying Dennis, but I was not. All right, who's next? Uh, Jeanette? Matthias? Hi, I'm a former library trustee, current village trustee. I just want to start by saying I was appalled when I watched the budget meeting on May 20. The budget meeting is the most important meeting of all. You have an $8 million budget, and your fiduciary duty is to protect the taxpayers with spending. It seems you have no regard for the taxpayer. All of you on the board may have more money than you know what to do with, and spending is no object, but a lot of Niles residents struggle. And Tim, for you to say you don't see Niles suffering and request a Carolyn to get her statistics was wrong. If you're passionate about your position, you would do your own research. Niles has a lot of seniors, foreclosures, and those who live check to check. Just look at the state of Illinois. July alone, gas taxes doubling, license plate stickers going up anywhere from 50 to 100 and a quarter. A budget meeting should be line by line to possibly low, lower a specific line. You may need to have more than one meeting to do it right. The village has two to three, two to three hours at a time. And Patty, for you to call another board member the B word, and then again to say, I'm sorry, I should not have said it, but I meant it is not professional. Sure. You're an elected official. Sure. I agree right. with you. Well, you're an elected official. You could have been removed from that meeting for that, but it would have taken um, the board to approve, approve your removal. In a budget meeting, board members ask a lot of questions, and there is no limit on how many they can ask in any board meeting in order to get the answers for themselves and the taxpayers for the reason of the spending. You also stated that you did not want to be here all night. I took the same oath you did, and I don't remember it saying, you attend a meeting from 7 to 7.30 with a half hour break. A meeting takes as long as it takes to accomplish what you are discussing and voting on. And then you keep track of who does most of the talking. Are you concentrating on the discussion? Then you said, if at a budget meeting, you should talk about the budget. In a budget meeting, anything to do with the spending of money is talking budget. And Karen being president, you did nothing to stop it, stop Patty for her behavior, but you did stop a board member several times by interrupting or saying, let's move on. Susan, 
for you to say you were being attacked and stop asking questions meant you weren't prepared. And that's fine. There's times you're not, or anybody isn't. But a director should be prepared for a budget meeting. If the question is asked, you don't have the answer, just say, I don't have the answer at this time, but we'll get it to the person who asked the question. And how can you put a dollar amount in the budget <coughs> for signage without having a quote or estimate of the cost? What if the budget and amount is too much? Do you feel then you have more money to spend? Or if it is not enough money, where does the extra come from? The general fund? Trustee Martin and Derblick are, well, former Trustee Martin and Derblick are correct. Committees should be formed to discuss programs, offered events, etc. Meet, discuss, come back with a recommendation to the board. Consider having a resident or two on the committee for their opinion on what they would like to see or have. In answer to Linda's statement on committees, when I was on the board, there was, I believe, four. I'm getting old, so I could be wrong. Technology, which never happened because it was dissolved. Buildings and grounds maybe had two meetings, special reserve and employee benefit committee. Now an example, Dennis brought up <coughs> possibly discontinuing the van. This could be part of a committee discussing where does the van go, is there a schedule, what's the cost? And Tim, for you to say we will follow our procedure, make a motion and vote, you cannot make a motion if it's not on the agenda. I did not see on the agenda, I moved for board approval to discontinue the van, and I did bring the agenda, and I don't see any more on there. Uh, it will have to be added to a future agenda for discussion and possible voting. Another thing I would like to add is now that Trustee Martin um, resigned, I would like to see um, a notice will go out to select another trustee for the next election. So what I'd like is for all of you to consider. All right, the next uh, speaker is Dave Carabona. And Dave Carabona, Niles, Illinois. Um, this board has issues, and I can see why it, why it becomes so heated. Looking at the tapes and looking at the data, and of course I'm, I have experience in this area as a main township trustee and working with, with others in the past. Number one, you have a library administration provided no data or analysis of the current year's spending to plan the 2019-2020 budget. But instead, the board received the typical Excel spreadsheet listing budget line items with their summary total amounts. That would drive me crazy first. Second, the $1.9 million capital plan includes $1.7 million in new projects without any quotes, which, which whether or not required, should be sought as being the right fiduciary thing to do. Number three, the error of summarily approving blanket huge amounts of spending. Number four, the approximately $4.6 million in employee costs, which include a 3% raise, staff membership dues of $8,900, quote, unquote, professional development budgeted expense for $54,000, which includes travel to Tennessee, nice state. A lot of Illinois people are going there now. <laughs> Carol impressed for online workshops instead of costly travel plans. The library being open on Sundays for four hours while those employees then working those Sundays being paid time and a half with monies budgeted for this totaling $81,900, which is then added to all the quote-unquote entertainment expenses budgeted for the programs offered on those Sundays. Feel the heat? I'm feeling it. If I was a trustee, there be number five, there are being part-time positions that in addition to salary, they receive IMRF benefits, sick days, vacation days, and medical insurance. Number six, the additional employment positions sought by the library director are no longer evaluated or subject to prior approval by this library board. This decision-making authority, which has been relinquished by this board, contrary to the law, in my opinion, needs to be taken back by the board. Whether you keep that responsibility or you pass it off to someone else, you're responsible. The buck stops here. Number seven, 
that the, consolida the consolidated income statement dated April 30th, May board packet, shows a $1.7 million in surplus, which the library cannot possibly, properly, actually need to spend in the last five months of and by year end, plus assets and cash on hand totaling approximately $10 million, equals no reason for increasing budget, no reason for increasing future levies. Now, on top of all that happening during that meeting, eight, as to the majority of the board, pushing as the 4 2019-2020 strategic plan projects listed in the budget. The director, A, stated she had no cost data to provide to the board for these four projects. B, this strategic plan timeline includes many more projects with associated costs for saying not included in this budget. Then on number nine, the notification by the executive director that the program costs for 2019-2020 will be higher because friends of the library uh, no, uh, no longer ha handle certain costs, which total about $7,600, allegedly. But at the same time, the board's holding $10,000 in book sales from Friends of the Library that they took from Friends of the Library. That money can be used to offset even that expense. And if I was sitting at this board hearing this, I would be having a problem. Denial of Carolyn's request, number 10, for a copy of the Compile 2018-2019 program report to review outcomes and plan for next year's programs by the executive director who stated, hey, this report, Carolyn, is no longer available. Number 11, that there are numerous programs in the library's chapter one, quote unquote, there being a need that the board not increase and should decrease the number of programs made up and then funded by the library over objections. Those objections came by from Carolyn and Dennis. The rest of the board, no, silent. There was a, number 12, there was a lack of review of any data as the board voted to tentatively approve Ordinance 19-01, allowing for a 2019-2020 budget of $8.4 million. And again, as I told, spoke about earlier today, this is an increase from 2015 when your spending was $5.9 million, 2016 when your spending was $6.8 million, 2017 when your spending was $6.9 million, 2018 when your spending was 7.3 million and now we're going up to 8.4. This is going to cause a lot of heat at this table for someone who's conscious of being a trustee. A trustee is an auditor. If you're not auditing, get out. If you don't want to do your job, get out. Don't silence voices. Don't accuse someone of assault and of being afraid of someone when you clearly look at that tape as false to silence the voice. You want to silence the, the, uh, the message. Don't make an environment so miserable for a trustee that they'd have to go ahead and walk out of here or compromise on their principles. That's why, again, I call for this board being merged into the Village of Niles board, the Village of Niles taking over this responsibility. Thank you. <coughs> yes. May I just correct the actual error? Uh, yes, you may. Okay. Uh, I just wanted to say, for the record, since you referred to our just giving a spreadsheet, the board actually received a 51 page packet of information regarding the budget and that every meeting received probably 20 pages of information on spending. The board had a great deal of information to work with. I also thought that didn't somebody mention they felt the part-time people were under IMRF. Mm -hmm. I, I don't believe that's true, right? Some of them are. Just some of them, right? Yes. It depends on what the level is. If they're under 30 hours or not, though, isn't it? Or it's, uh, 20. it's 20. Okay. Yeah. Carolyn, do you want to say something? Um, yes, I do. Um, regarding the 30-some page um, document where you see um, all the budget, I think um, we talked about that. And when I went through it, what it consists of are charts, pie charts, and graphs that just repeat numbers that are already in that spreadsheet. And the only information included was <coughs> definition of the word fines or definition of the word um, revenues and definitions of all kinds of other library terms. A Webster dictionary is not a budget document. So it may have been 30 or 50 pages, but that's all it included. There was no data in there at all for analysis. That is just yeah. not real. I have it right here. It's just not real. All right, all right. We can pass a copy out. Uh, all right, uh, next person. I'm sorry, I'm having a hard time reading it. Tisha. 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 Tisha.
A notice will go out to seat another trustee until the next election. Pick the most qualified and interested person for the position. Do not waste someone's time by having them come in if you already have your minds made up who the person is going to be. Okay. Uh, programs. The library director, Susan Lumpy, recently admitted she does not track library program costs and attendance. I see this as poor management and we the taxpayers are paying for it. This board should never accept a large amount such as 1.5 million without quotes to back it up. Okay, as an hours resident, I am disappointed and embarrassed as to board members' behavior on two occasions. Number one, at the budget meeting, another a board member called another board member a very inappropriate name. Really, the video is all over Facebook. Number two, at the regular monthly board meeting, multiple events unfolded from a face-to-face -face confrontation, which have almost looked like punches could have been thrown, or the cops being called. Then there was a back and forth about getting sworn in, sitting or standing, and of course standing, who sits being sworn in. It was very uncomfortable witnessing all of these events. Board members should never behave like that. In conclusion, you are responsible to be professionals. You need to work together as a team as you represent the very people that elected you. Thank you. Thank you, Tisha. Tisha? Tisha. 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 So uh, in response to the uh, pick the most qualified and, and already uh, chosen some, we haven't even started. Uh, soliciting interest in people. I don't know of anybody who's already made a decision that wants to replace uh, Dennis. So okay. that's, it's you. going to be an open process. Great. Uh, we have one last. Uh, Kevin. Oh. Uh, you're not on here, Kevin? Kevin. Yeah. Well, come on up. Okay. All right. Um, come on up. Kevin Ashcroft. Um, this is my first. Same. Oh, hold on, hold on, one second, hold on a second. Right, just right here. Uh, yeah. okay. This is my first time attending a library board meeting. I'm here out of concern for lack of professionalism by some of the board members towards other board members who choose to ask questions about such things as budget items, question why the actions are being pushed forward without discussion. It is appalling the amount of disrespect for not just getting along. A second concern I have is regarding some programs and events by the library, such as the 60th anniversary of the library. It's typical such events are coming at times like 25th, 50th, and 75th year, etc. Why the 60th? Prior to this was a, another program, the Polish Heritage Celebration. A huge banner hung outside the entrance made me wonder, how much did this cost and who paid for it? I inquired um, to an employee if other cultures were going to be getting the same attention to which I was told no. Um, Finally, I find it difficult to understand why money is spent on some facility repairs, but others are areas are neglected, such as peeling paint on the entrance of the arch. I believe last summer you had the exterior of the building painted, but yet if you walk towards that arch, you see peeling paint. So I don't know if they're coming back to the contractor or not. Um, and I want to say for the past four years, I walk along the front of the library and on the flower bed is the stone that has been sitting there lifted up and I would assume it would have been taken care of at the time when the renovation was done but it still hasn't been taken care of and I mentioned this to some of the maintenance people and you know nothing ever seems to be done about it so um, that's it um, let's see here. Uh, we, do, we do have a schedule for painting the, the arch, correct? Contracts have been signed. I'm sorry. Contracts have been signed. Contracts have been signed. Uh, Kevin, wait, wait one second.
So we've got a, a contract for the, the arch mm -hmm. to paint it. Okay. Uh, do you know anything about the... It's the, weather, the weather's been bad, so that's one of the reasons why they haven't been able to paint it. They're right. over rain. Why well, just the way they the stone did it last year? Yeah. Well, and the stone is where? It's right in the front where that the double doors, I don't know if that's a utility room or something, but if you walk down, you see this one limestone sitting up mm -hmm. on an angle. Okay. So, like Thank $5 you. worth of mortar. Mm -hmm. Take care of it. All right. Thank, Thank you. you. Uh, we have one member, Susanna, still here? No. She's not here for the general one, but apparently she's going to come and speak. Uh, all right. That concludes the public comments. Thank you all. Could you please? Could you please? Sure. Thank you. Uh, I'm sorry, did you talk for the treasurer's report? I have not yet. No, I sorry. thank our speaker. Uh, next item is the uh, is the treasurer report of the treasurer's report. Daddy. I'm asking. Sure. This is my first time. And I'm really so, can I ask you eleven month of the fiscal year? Uh, almost ninety two percent of our way to the budget. Uh, the overall expenditures of the library are about eighty three percent of the budget. So uh, we're doing pretty well. Uh, revenues. Uh, are 104% of budget on page 12. Uh, fines, 120% of budget. Replacement tax, 93% of budget. I think that's where that's going to stay. I don't think we're going to get any more payments. Uh, investment income is 172% of budget. And task board income remains strong at 148%. Uh, salaries on page 12 are slightly under budget at 89%. On the next page, page 13, uh, library materials, uh, same as last month, running uh, slightly uh, higher in budget, but are expected to even out at the end of the year. Library uh, library operating expenses on 13 are at 79%. The overall categories are running under budget. Page 14, general administration expenses are at 74% of the relevant budget. Um, page 14 as well. Uh, employee fringe benefits are pretty much on budget. Utilities are on budget. Capital expenditures, special reserve is at 43%. Any questions? Okay, thank you very much. Okay, I will now entertain a motion to approve the payment of bills for operating expenses of $277,575.31 and payroll expenses of $279,669.83 and special reserve expenses of $22,750 for a total monthly expense of $579,995.41. This is including a mileage reimbursement to Carolyn, uh, Trustee Carolyn Driblick for attendance at the trustee events. And the reason I'm uh, pointing that out, Carolyn, and, and everybody else, there's a uh, Illinois statute now that uh, board members have to approve any reimbursements to trustees. So uh, we do need to specifically uh, approve that. You know, that's why we're, we're, we're specifically mentioning it. Goes up. $47, if you see on page 17, there's a $47.33 reimbursement to Carolyn. For, uh, Carolyn, correct me if I'm wrong, I, I believe that's for uh, mileage for a couple events you went to. I think that's what it says, right? I yeah. believe so, yeah. Okay. Anyway, so uh, do I have a motion on uh, the approval of these bills? Motion. Second. Thank you, Diane. Second, uh, Linda All right. Uh, Diane, do you have anything to say on this? No, that's fine. Uh, Linda? No. Carolyn? I'm fine with that. Uh, I have nothing to say on this, Karen. What what events did Carolyn go to? For which she's collecting trying to collect money? Carolyn? Do we not have the form I filled out? Can you tell us what you went to? to, to, went to uh, one was in January up in um, uh, I I don't know, I was with you at that one in January. Yeah, I didn't answer your money for it, though. Okay, fine. Well, if you didn't answer money, I, that's your prerogative. Um, and then the other one was in, I think, Oak Park. They were both um, trustee uh, conferences. 
Okay. Uh, may I have a roll call, please? Thank you. Yes. Carolyn? Yes. Diane? Yes. Danny? Yes. Linda? Yes. Yes. Uh, next item on the agenda is the director's report. Uh, Susan? All right. Uh, first up is, as you know, there is an event every year called the Nile Block Party. Uh, last year, as part of the block party, they had uh, an activity where people could purchase ducks and duck race. I don't exactly understand it because I wasn't there. But uh, the, benefit, the money that was raised by selling the ducks went to Niles Family Services. Uh, and so Ariane is our connection with the, Ariane Carey, the head of youth services, is our connection with the block party. And she just wondered what the board would think about having one day where we sold ducks or stuff in the, or allowed somebody from the village to come sell ducks in the vestibule, like on a Saturday or something. Uh, partly because we have such a great relationship with Niles Family Services. They are on call for us whenever we have a, a patron who is struggling. Um, we, we try to work very closely with them and they have come and, you know, presented it at programs and things like that, so it would be just a little way to give back to them. But it, that definitely would be, you know, something that the board would want to be behind. We would not want to be selling things in the vestibule if uh, you didn't support that. Just kind of wanted to take the temperature on that. They so, want to come and sell. Uh, it, it's really, it was Ariane's idea. To use the it would be, space. yeah. And we don't normally allow people to sell in the vestibule, so yeah, no. I didn't want to. Are we no. ducks? No. No. no, no, no. Oh, it's like rubber ducks. The rubber ducks, ducks for their race. race. The rubber ducks. Yeah. Oh, I'm like, wow, okay. Yeah. Well, I don't know. Uh, I was going to just, um, I, I, I'll voice my opinion on that, though. I, I, I guess I wouldn't want to set a precedent because now where do we draw the line? I think somebody mentioned, I just heard Girl Scouts. You know, we, well, we have done that in the past and we stopped doing that this year. Right. Yeah, yeah. Because the board I, has expressed some concern about selling. I, I have concerns oh, yeah. about that too. Because um, it, I, I'm sure it's a great charity, and I have no doubt about that. But there are so many charities who might then ask to sell things in our lodge, and then I, I just don't know how, if we allow one, we can then start disallowing other ones. Um, okay. So I have, I have that concern. Can I just ask one question? Is this during the village block party, or yeah. is this? I, well, the, I guess they're sold in advance, and then they, I guess it's literally a, a race in water of some kind. I don't know. Like it's, so, oh, so there's just, gambling in it too. Well, <sighs> so could we, them, could we possibly just sell them at yeah. some block party <laughs> instead of our library? I, I'm sure they are going to do that. It was just a way to oh, okay. raise a little more money. They, they, I'm sure they're sold all kinds of places. Okay, well, it sounds like that's a no. Uh, well, I don't know. It's, it's, oh, we're reluctant, yeah, we can say. I, I have no opinion. I personally don't see anything wrong with it, but I also understand that there are, it might be setting a precedent. That's what I want to say. Okay. Okay. I, okay. All right. All right. I, know. But, I mean, I, I think if they want to um, sell it in a break room, Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Employees okay. want to sell to other employees. Okay. If you generally let employees, that's a good select from other employees in the break room. I don't know if that's something to put up. Uh, not typically, but but I don't think that would be a bad precedent. I wouldn't object to that. Okay, thank you. Um, I just want to remind you that the fourth of July march is coming up. Sasha is going to need a uh, headcount very soon. He, if anybody needs t-shirts or anything like that. You can either march or uh, ride in the van, or uh, there's you know a booth at the park uh, if you would prefer not to be actually walking, but to actually help me on the booth, what you is, could do that. What's your uh, booth? I think usually have little kids games, you know, like bows and buckets, things like that. So it would be doing that kind of thing. So if you decide you'd like to do that, please let me know within the next day or two. I would. Uh, are you using the same shirts as last year? I think we are. If you have a shirt from last year, we are going to reuse those, right? Yeah. Okay. And of course, we've got trustee pants. Are those the ones that say red, white, blue? Uh, no. 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 It's, no, it's like four icons on the front okay. and it has the name on the back. Pretty teal. Right. Yeah. Okay. All right. Um, I wanted to just let the board know, uh, as 
uh, the trash off said, we do have a little bit of disrepair up in the front. And the other thing that's a little bit of disrepair are the veterans' benches. Uh, we are aware of it. I wanted you to know, first of all, I contacted um, the, the person that runs the Boy Scouts at St. John Brebeuf because they have had Eagle Scouts a couple of times that have refinished the benches, and so he's going to try to find us an Eagle Scout. I don't know if he'll be successful or not, and I think Dave is also mm -hmm. trying to school scout in there. Oh. There is more involved politically in scouts in order to get and things the kids have to prove and do to get it approved mm -hmm. through scouts. Otherwise, okay. they don't get credit. For okay. It. So if, even if, if he finds a kid who's willing to take it on, it might take months before that kid gets approved from Boy Scouts. Yeah. Because I've taken girls through that, which is called the Gold Award. Oh. Good to know. So I, I did want you to be aware that we are aware of it, and Dave is uh, also trying to figure out some way to get it taken care of. It's obviously a nice project for a kid to mm -hmm. accomplish. It's a real feeling of accomplishment and a, a real contribution on their behalf. Um, I just wanted to point out a couple of things from my written board report. Uh, right at the beginning, it talks about our new app. Has anybody gotten a chance to download it yet? Are you interested? No. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So uh, take a look and let us know if you like it. Um, we're just kind of testing it out, seeing what kind of response it gets. Uh, many of the staff have tried it now. We all like it a lot. It's pretty easy to use. And the other thing I just wanted to point out, and you probably saw already, are the pictures of our team librarian, Rachel, at the Culver School graduation. And that was just a few of the pictures that were taken. She just has all these kids that are just crazy about her to the point where, and, and, and then she's crazy about that too. Yeah, so I just thought that was, you know, she's kind of turning into one of our rock stars, and that's pretty neat. Um, I wanted to let you know that we have had three memorial things lately. Uh, we have had a family, sisters of a library patron who used to come and uh, use our computers every day. Um, and he loved the library so much that they wanted to uh, make a memorial contribution for him. And so uh, Dave is working on it, and Diane also did the ordering on this, uh, a memorial bench for him. So when that's all set up, I'll put that in the director's report. But I thought you'd like to know that. We had another. Uh, it's right over here in the. I don't know if you can see. It. It's on Oakton Court, right, kind of right by the um, East parking lot. Yeah, it'll be a nice little little area. It's very pretty. Um, we also had a woman who. Um, loved the library very much and so her family asked if they could have her sort of awake or a little memorial type thing in one of our meeting rooms and we normally would say no that you know we've said no to birthday parties and things like that they have a lot of mess potential but she said it's basically for you know like them to share their memories and have a slideshow and that just seemed pretty much like a regular meeting but i thought it was very touching that that's that they wanted to have it here at the library because she loved the library so much her name was Catherine foss and we had a third donation uh, from a family in uh, for some children's DVDs. That's somebody named Marianne Barton. And I believe we have uh, someone else is going to put in their written material that you can make donations to the library in memory of, of this person. So when I know more about that, I will include it. The last thing I'm going to... I'm sorry, would you thank them all for the board? Oh, of course. Of course. We always thank them. Yes. <laughs> yes. yes. So, so uh, did you have a name for the first person that we're going to have the um, memorial event? Did you have a name? Stanley Z is something very long. <coughs> but I will put all of these things into right, written material. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, and then the last thing I want to tell you is not a good thing. It is that uh, a giant publisher, Hachette, has changed their ebook model, lending model, so that now instead of us just being able to buy an ebook and our patrons being able to check it out over and over, now they're putting it on a two year metered model, which means that after two years our license runs out. And they are and that they're not the first ones to do this, but it's just ebooks are really expensive. I think people always think, oh ebooks, we're not going to need a library anymore. And the fact is they're really expensive. So the way this would work is they're, they're lowering their prices a little bit on individual titles, and the way they're excusing it is by saying people won't want the same books after two years, so you will, you'll have more money to spend. But, the, you know, obviously that's not always true. So it's disappointing, and unfortunately it is the trend. So, um, you know, yeah, people are... So you have to rebuy the same book over and over yep. every two years, yep. essentially. Yes, that's correct. Right? Right. Yeah, and when you have an e-book, 
only a certain number of people can use it at a time. Too, yes, right. Well, the ones that are on Hoopla is multi-use. Many people can be on anything okay. on Hoopla, but the ones that overdrive, it's one copy, one person at a time. So, yeah. I. Oh. Go ahead. Dave. I just was wondering the name of this publisher. Hachette, H-A-C-H-E-T-T-E. Very big, one of the big five. So, so um, on, on Overdrive, we have books from many publishers in the world. Okay, yeah, yeah. Yeah. How, how would our, so our system, they would just, they would pull that book? It, how, it, how it would just it? disappear. Uh, yeah, and then the other annoying thing about that is not only do you have to pay for another copy of the book, but it does mean more staff time going in to keep track of whether we have lost access to something. Uh, uh, more. It's really you don't get a notification that it's being taken out? Well, you might, but then that person still has to go in and be doing the reordering and everything and checking the circulation yeah. and sure. seeing if they want to reorder it. And it's, you know, yeah. so all of the selection process has to go into that now. So, and we have extremely competent people doing that, but sure. it's just one more thing that we have to do. And, and, and like I said, my concern is that it's a trend. Right. I was, I was going to say, we, we, at the high school, we do get a notification. Um, and yes, then someone has to go on, we have one person go in, check to see how many times that book was actually checked out. Yeah. Is it worth to reorder or not? Yeah, yeah. it is. Yeah. It's just a process. It is. But we are seeing the trend of more books are metered now instead yeah. of that you just purchased. But usually it's a one year. So yeah. Actually, I'm <laughs> so I guess happy that it's a yeah. two year. I'm like, oh, that's a, that's a little bit of a yahtzee, yeah. I guess. Because yeah. <laughs> usually for us it's a one year. So. And, and I'm sorry to just make you hear that too because I understand why you're looking at circulation and for a couple of years you might not reorder it, but some groups, like my book called, okay. we never choose a book unless it's over two years old. Oh, because okay. there's more copies available. That's good. Yeah. And that and yeah. so right. I mean that would really hurt groups like ours because there would continue to be fewer copies available yeah. even as time went by. Yeah. Yeah. Hmm. So what books do we get on overdrive as opposed to on um, uh, Overdrive is is much much larger. It's like it, they have access to most of the available ebooks and the audio books. Uh, Hoopla is much much smaller. Mm -hmm. So, but would this eventually affect them? Mm -hmm. Hoopla? Uh, that's a good question. Mm -hmm. I, I, I would, they might eventually have to change their model, which would make it much less tempting to use. But so far, so good mm -hmm. on that. Could we get to a spot where the physical book would be more economical than actually the e-book? The physical book is more economical than e-books right. now, yeah. E-books are usually 30 to $60 a piece, uh, and the, the audio is even more. Bring the books down to that Right, right. Well, we, you know, we, we, we have many, the, Niles is, a, as generally speaking, a community that is slow to adapt, we, you know, adopt new formats. So, we had VHS for many years after a lot of libraries had gotten rid of their VHS because our patrons were still using it. So we continue to buy books. It's just a matter of, you know, with the DVDs and with the music, those things are starting to disappear and are not going to be available for too much longer. But books, I think, are still, you know, print books, I think, are still going to be around. And they say that millennials actually prefer the print books. Yay, way, way millennials. Yeah. All right. Um, I did have a video I was going to show you tonight, but I think this meeting is, you know, you have quite a bit of business, and I will save that for another night. Thank you. Can I just mention one thing about your report? Sure. Um, and this is in reference to the databases and downloadables by Suzy. Um, told of K on page 38. Kathleen actually did bring costs down from $12,000 to $9,000. She yep. saved $2,500 yep. and also saved another $1,900 in another product purchase through her fiscal awareness. Yep. For those that think we don't look at our budget continuously, I know your staff constantly does that because you have Evident, you told us about it. Every single report, there's one or two people that indicate their uh, fiscal responsibility, and I think it's important to know that. And I know that you you do as well. Thank you. Thank you.
Yeah, she does a fantastic job. She is, she is uh, diligent and tenacious. Okay. Uh, next item on our agenda. Oh, excuse me. Are we finished with the director report? Do you have anything else? I did have a question. Sure. I didn't know we ended. Yeah, that was um, that it's called SOSHA, S-O-S-H-A. Yes. And uh, I'm sorry, can I just say what page you're on? Oh, sorry, 44. Um, actually, the last page. Yeah. The Safety um, and OSHA Compliance Committee. Okay, it mentioned that you're planning next year's safety training activities. Are these um, activities or are they um, uh, measures to be compliant? I mean, are they training? What is that actually? Uh, no, they, they uh, any issues that we have with compliance, they take care of right away. Uh, the, actually, three of the safety committee are sitting right there. Oh, <laughs> so you would like to it say? Training. It is training. It is? It is training for the staff. We did quite a bit of training last year, first aid and blood work pathogens and um, this is so mental health. So, you know, we call them activities. They're not always fun, but. This is also have to do with like code atom and all of that stuff. Um, yeah, so you should practice code adding during staff day. Okay, well, I just was wondering what it stood for. Okay, thank you. Okay, are we done with the director's report? I think so. All righty, the next item. Uh, do I hear uh, a motion to adapt ordinance 19-02? In ordinance, ordinance setting the schedule of meetings of the Board of Trustees of the Niles Main District Library for the fiscal year commencing July 1st, 2019 and ending June 30th, 2020. Uh, Karen made a motion. Second. Are here a second? second? Linda, thank you. Uh, any discussion on our schedule, Karen? Um, I, I was just wondering uh, if you, Susan, are you on here? Other problems that we sometimes run into. Okay. We checked. We're all good. Okay. Daddy, anything? No. Diane, anything? They're fine, I don't know. Yeah, I mean, oh, Daddy, I just looked at the holidays. Those to me would be the big ones for most people. Sure. And Linda, yeah. Carolyn? Oh, no, I'm good. Great. Can I uh, um, have a roll call? Karen? Yes. Karen? Yes. Diane? Yes. Patty? Yes. Linda? Yes. Yes. Okay. okay. I hear a motion uh, to approve the recommended price tags to be charged for health insurance beginning on July 1st, 2019 and ending on June 30th, 2020. Uh, can I have a motion? So moved. Karen, again? Thank you. Uh, uh, we got this uh, information on page 54. And Greg, can you please walk us through this? Happy to. Thank you. Uh, so the um, uh, the policy that the library has in place to uh, charge employees for health care insurance is as follows: for single coverage, um, the employee pays 10 percent of the uh, overall cost of the uh, health insurance and for coverage above that the employee pays 25 percent so if you look at if you look at the um, monthly price tags oh and then you can see that in the uh, in the chart about the middle of the page okay so all of these numbers are calculated uh, using that uh, algorithm the, um, if you look to the bottom of the page, you can see that the cost for single coverage uh, actually uh, decreased by $5 a month. Um, and that's comparing uh, column one and column three in the, uh, uh, in the chart. Um, employee plus spouse uh, went up $5. Employee plus child went up $39. These are all monthly numbers. And employee plus family went up $55. Um, 
overall, when you look at the expected mi expected mixture of uh, people in, that we expect in the health care plan, our overall cost is increasing approximately 2%. So, you know, I, I think we're seeing uh, some good experience. Um, you know, we are seeing some retirements, which which help with the uh, health healthcare line because if you retire, you're you know you're a higher risk uh, you're higher risk for uh, health insurance uh, as viewed by Blue Cross Blue Shield and the health in industry uh, overall, and um, then you're usually replacing that person with somebody that's a little bit earlier in their career who is less of a risk. So that causes us to pay a little bit less in uh, health insurance. This is the second year in a row that overall our government has decreased. I remember this from last year. Yeah, yeah it's, a, it's an anomaly. And, and when we first started looking at it, um, and you start doing the research, it looks like the overall cost is going to be subject to medical inflation, in which this year is running, you know, 6% or so. So um, it's uh, quite a change. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Uh, anybody got comments on this one? Then I'll start with Karen again. Um, so, Barry, I just want to clarify you say, um, of course, the individual amount is going down. The other ones are going up. Correct. But do most of our employees just take the individual? Well, overwhelmingly, yes. Yeah. So, did you, do I understand you to say that our overall costs are actually going to go down? That's what we expect, right? Because so a few of our employees are actually taking, like, the employee stocks family. Child I think there are three or four employees that take uh, the employee plus, okay. you know, spouse or employee plus uh, family. And uh, because of the overwhelming number of people take the uh, single coverage, what that, you know, the, that decide. savings, you know, mm -hmm. uh, uh, builds up and then overall we have the savings. Okay, great. Thank you. Okay. No. no. I Thank you. Um, yeah, I had a question. Um, I noticed you list the um, the monthly price tags for the employees' payments. Mm -hmm. Could you um, tell us what the library's portion would be um, monthly in payroll for these different um, breakdowns? Um, yeah, roughly. Um, well, if you look at if you look at what uh, the financial statement on uh, page, uh, I think it's on page 14. No, I'm sorry, 15. And you look at the group health insurance, our monthly actual was about $38,000. We expect our monthly actual going forward to be slightly less than that. Okay, so. Um, and that, I just want to point out that's net of the amounts collected from employees. Under the price tag okay, could you um, provide me with what the library's monthly cost is for this breakdown? Employee, employee plus spouse, so we can see what it costs the employee and then we can see what the library's portion is. By, by email, line item? If you could email that to me, sure, and to just correlate with these breakdowns. Um, sure. All right, I appreciate it. Thank you. Um, I, I did have a question, I guess, Greg, to our, um, who do we have uh, health care with? Blue Cross Blue Shield. Blue Cross Blue Shield. Is there any uh, need to, or do you look at other providers? Is there, how does that process work? Um, so every year, um, what we do is, is we take it to the market and get the best prices that we can. Um, you know, very often uh, we get mobile bids from alternative uh, uh, providers, and then when you start to dig into it, um, you, you know you find out that they want to uh, have everything go to underwriting. And what that means is, uh, and, it, and it protects them. What that means is they look at each individual person and their family and their medical history as available through Blue Cross Blue Shield, and then they price it. Very often they price equal to or higher than uh, Blue Cross Blue Shield. So, um, you know, it used to be years ago, you know, uh, they would step in and they'd try to buy the uh, buy the business with lower rates and so forth. And in a matter of a year, maybe two years, you'd be right
right back or higher um, than where you started. Uh, let's, um, what differentiates uh, Blue Cross Blue Shield and what makes us uh, excited to be with them is the, you know, the depth and breadth of their um, service. Well, not their services, but you know, the, the doctors that accept it. Um, oh. And you know, if you get a bill you know, from a doctor for a procedure, and let's say it's a thousand dollars, just to pick a round number, um, on the strength of Blue Cross Blue Shield negotiations. Uh, that price immediately drops significantly. It could be as low as, let's say, $500 or $400, and then they uh, adjudicate the claim after that, mm -hmm. you know, apply it to the deductible right. and so on and so forth. Mm -hmm. um, with uh, some of the other, uh, with some of the other providers, you know, they're not as strong negotiated mm -hmm. prices, so what happens is they're bearing more of the cost, mm -hmm. and that gets rolled into your rates down the road. Sure. And um, you know the network is not as uh, uh, robust as the Blue Cross Blue Shield. Great. Thank you so much. Can I just ask one more question? Sure, Carol. Uh, based on our um, staffing pool, with more of our employees being like singular employees, are we? gravitating towards being in a better position to look elsewhere in the future as opposed to staying with Blue Cross and Blue Shield? Well, I don't think the, um, you know, the, the type of um, insurance level has anything to do with making us better or, or, or Isn't it or age worse. that makes a difference? It's experience. Um, experience in employees? Mm -hmm. So, if you have um, if you have somebody that has uh, heart issues um, and it's an ongoing case, that might you know that oh, might I cost them a year like three hundred thousand dollars. Or something. So, so you said experience. Are, it's yeah, like I'm, yeah. Where you worked before. Or yeah. So are you saying? So I'm thinking older employees mm -hmm. are usually at a higher cost at, at the higher end for insurance. And well, as I, as I said, statistically, uh, they are more likely to uh, use the insurance. But what I'm trying to say is, our, with, with our staffing pool, we have so many new employees, are we gravitating towards a time when we might be able to go elsewhere and get a better deal? Um, yeah, I don't know. That's hard to answer. Um, in any particular year, Carolyn, it would depend on what our uh, uh, insurance experience is. So if you have all young people they're all 25 and don't generally view it as not having a lot of issues, but somebody has um, picked something more of a multiple sclerosis. Oh, I'm sure. I well, I mean, I'm thinking of something chronic yeah, sure. yeah, for a long period of time. What, that, what that's going to do is that's going to cause our uh, experience in terms of cost to be very high. Right, I so, understand. So they'll adjust us higher than, than what the community mm -hmm. rating that we're currently on uh, dictates. Are we grandfathered into this plan? Or? Yes. Okay. Yes, as a matter of fact, if we make any significant changes, we will pay significant more. Could maybe we should consider um, you know, discussing the different options that you plan to come up with, or maybe we could even bring some suggestions too, because I know other area other um, localities are, are also grandfathered mm -hmm. and they seem to be at a position where they can now look elsewhere and um, obtain better pricing. But I know it has a lot to do with your staff and pool and medical issues and what have you. Mm -hmm. But um, I think maybe at least next year before we get to this point where we're just voting, maybe we could just consider what some options might be mm -hmm. or find out what some of these others are doing. Mm -hmm. okay, that was my thought. Uh, Linda. Yeah, I just, um, cause I don't remember doing that for a while, and I know we had done that in the past, like, I don't know, a while back, maybe six, seven years ago. Have you done it since you've done it? Uh, we did it, um, we did it my second, we did a yeah, full right. underwriting in, right. this, in my I, second year here. Yeah, I remember we had so done it once, and because we had such a good deal from Blue Cross Blue Shield, and we were trying, yeah, like we were grandfathered in, that nobody even came close. Right. But yeah, it doesn't hurt. We haven't done it in a while, but um, I just remember that we had a really, one of the best deals we could have. Okay. But that doesn't mean that that changed. 
changes. So, yeah. so would that be like in the, uh, in the April meeting or the? Yeah, generally in um, certain yeah, March meeting current. or something. Because yeah. then at least we know, yeah, sure. we've got it. Can you, I don't know, <laughs> indicate that March which probably, it might have to be earlier than that because it would be a process because the so staff all has to fill out de so. really detailed medical oh, histories right. for in that process. Oh, yeah, so. yeah because as I yes. said, they look at each individual oh, employee and, oh. uh, and do at, underwriting at that level. Yeah, well, can we bring it up in January yeah. to discuss whether or not we want to go that route? Um, yeah, I mean, we could talk oh, about it anytime that you want it on sure. the agenda. Um, right, because all the so, people lost. Sometimes what we're doing, sometimes what we um, have to be careful of is going too early. So if we only have six months sure. experience on our belt in the current year, we're not going to get very um, hard pricing at that point. So Blue Cross Blue Shield generally doesn't talk to us until until much closer to the end of the year. You know, our fiscal year. Yeah. Well, our plan year, our, which so which mirrors have, the fiscal year. Right. Yeah. I know through us, through work, we, it, that all comes up in November, the insurance stuff and all of that. But yeah, you're probably on a calendar here. Yeah. yeah. But here it would be more so. Yeah. Okay. That's interesting to know. All right. So let's maybe put it out in January to revisit. Thank you. Uh, all right, Danny, can I have any uh, roll call, please? Karen? Um, yes. Carolyn? Yes. Diane? Yes. Patty? Yes. Linda? Yes. Yeah. Uh, yes. <coughs> it's my guess. <gap. laughs> Next, I need a motion to approve the recommended purchase of liability and workers' compensation insurance in the total amount of $62,168 for the 2019-2020 uh, fiscal year. Karen. Second. Patty. Um, information, uh, information on page 55. Uh, any discussion we need on this, Greg, from you on this? It seems pretty straightforward. Right? Yeah, the, um, uh, we're up 1.29%. Uh, which is a uh, just shy of $800 uh, difference over last year. Um, you know, uh, if you had asked me uh, what I expected the prices to uh, uh, to be, I would have expected workers' comp to, uh, to increase, um, but it's actually decreased uh, significantly, in the, and then the other insurance uh, products have you know, uh, increased slightly. So, um, yeah, I'm very pleased, especially with the workers' comp, because we have we have had some uh, accidents around the library that have uh, had to uh, open up cases with uh, with the Hartford, and uh, and we seem to be doing a better job. I think the old cases are falling off too, sure. in some respects. Okay. Um, what's commercial crime? Is it uh, employee debt? Uh, it's it's like directors and officers. Oh. Um, I don't know. <laughs> I'm looking at the prices. They look pretty much on target, I would think. Um, I mean, I don't know. Okay, Dan. It looks acceptable to me. Linda? I was wondering, what's our umbrella covered? <clears throat> so, um, dollar you mean a, a dollar amount? Yeah. It's five million. Okay. And then, um, it's five million. Okay. Yeah. And then, um, how many years does it take before any incidents are taken off of? Drop off of workman's time. Is it three years, five years, how long? You know, I don't recall exactly. Have, to have right. we had any current ones like in this previous year? Did we continue? Uh, we have not had any recent ones. We did have an employee um, uh, try to submit a claim um, 
Uh, but he no longer uh, works uh, for us. Oh. Um, so nice to look at. And we don't we don't know what the ultimate outcome of that is going to be. But so far, we, uh, the insurance company has not agreed to accept it as a legitimate uh, claim. So you're saying an employee who used to work for us had an incident and then tried to file a claim? Is that what that means? It means that prior to his uh, departure, he had a condition which he felt should be covered by workers' comp. And during the time of his employment, he had uh, hired an attorney to uh, pursue a claim, and that is still outstanding. And he no, and he no longer works for us. But if they determine it was big, it well, was yeah, his yeah, job, we, then we'll yeah, be yeah, they, during, yeah, yeah. If it's during his employment period of employment, then you know, okay. then obviously that insurance would be. Right, and then I didn't hear what the definition of commercial crime was. It's like directors and officers uh, uh, insurance. It protects you. To suit, so if someone sued us. Yeah. Oh wow, gosh. All right, well thank you. That's what I thought you said, I'm thinking that, can't be. Okay, all right, thanks. All right, Diane, could you take a look, please? Uh, Karen? Yes. Carolyn? Yes. Diane? Yes. 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 All right, we had the budget hearing. And I would like to motion to table adoption of Ordinance 1903-2019-20 budget and appropriation until we're able to obtain quotes for the 1.9 mil capital projects and reassess them. You can't table it because it hasn't been moved yet. You can table before or after. You know, you have to make the motion and then the motion could be tabled. Um, it's not my knowledge, but if that's what I you want to do, I've looked it up. We've had the budget hearing and the budget earlier tonight. Do I hear a motion to adopt Ordinance 19-03, an ordinance providing for budget and appropriations for the Niles Main District Library, Cook County, Illinois, for the fiscal year beginning July 1st, 2019, and ending June 30th, 2020? Karen? Second. Now you make your motion. Carolyn, you want to make another motion? I'd like to table. Um, I'd like to motion a table adoption um, ordinance 1903 for the 2019-20 budget and appropriation until we can obtain quotes for the 1.9 million in capital projects and then reassess them. Which is the roof and something else, Carolyn? Was it mostly the, for the roof? Well, the 1.9 mil, there, no, there's there's a whole litany of uh, items. Well, it's just if, if you we like have a We have a capital projects list. Okay, Two what pages. Page, what page was that? Oh, this is from the budget. From the budget? Okay. Get um, okay. passed out okay. after. Yeah. Yeah. It's 1971648. Oh, oh, before we get into a discussion, I don't think there's going to second. We haven't made a motion on it yet. Oh, okay. Karen, okay. Karen, Karen's made a motion. No, no, the motion to table. Right. And absent a motion, second, that the motion to table dies. Um, well, no, you know what, sir? Uh, I, I will uh, second the motion because I believe we should have a discussion on whether or not we should table it. I don't think. Isn't that seconding that? Pardon me? Means we discuss whether or not we should table it? You're right. the lawyer. I don't think you can uh, discuss a motion on the table. No. You can't discuss a motion on the table? No, under writer's it's, well, it's, yeah. it's one of the things that you can't discuss. Uh -huh. Under writer's policy. Boxing me in the corner. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, uh, no, I'm, sorry, I'm not thinking second. Then. Sorry, uh, Carolyn. So, so the motion to table thing. dies because we don't have a second, is that it? Apparently. If okay, no thank you. So are we ready to discuss the other um, the actual motion to approve? Yes. yes. There was a second for that. There was a second, okay. yes. So Karen motioned and Linda second. Okay. All right. So um, we will have our discussion again. But let's uh, remind ourselves that uh, anything that we've already uh, approved uh, as a board we really shouldn't uh, need to rediscuss unless there's new information 
that would substantially change uh, anybody's um, um, vote on it. So in that light, uh, we can start our, our discussion, but let's limit it to things that we haven't already um, approved as a board. So Carolyn, uh, Karen, do you have any, uh, any uh, issues with that? There's any uh, no changes added since our uh, meeting on the 20th, and we have to ask any questions I wanted to ask on the 20th. So I don't have any additional questions at this time. You know what? And we can switch the order up of going around the table just for variety's sake. So Carolyn, why don't you go next? I'm sure. <laughs> well, who was second? I no, well, second. the, the, oh, the process I want to implement is, oh, is uh, the person who makes the motion starts, and then we go in an orderly fashion, but not necessarily the same order. Because, okay. Um, you know, oh, okay. Let's, 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 a couple things. Um, so with the capital projects for 1.9 mil, which we do not have any quotes, um, I find it hard to think we're going to approve them. If Wait, we don't have actual quotes. Oh, we right. can refer to the capital projects. No, okay. that, that was what you were given during your budget meeting. Do you have it? I have one for me, but I'm sorry, I can't can give it to you because I need to. Three. It's two pages. This one. What's it's from the rest of the numbers? It wasn't in the packet. Greg passed it out at the meeting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 It should be. I have it. Is there a page number on it? Just one or two. So the reason I think um, these items should not be included in the budget is because we don't have quotes, and based on this engineering report that was discussed a couple of times this evening. The engineering report is actually recommendations for replacement when issues arise. Um, I, I understand we paid $1,600 to $1,900 for this report. And I, I've gone through some of it, not as thoroughly as others have. But, um, I mean, to hire someone to come into the library and to tell us that we need to replace the hot water heater in the future when it needs to be replaced is, is really senseless. Um, I understand there's mechanical um, equipment that's included in here, but there's nothing in this report that says right now this all needs to be replaced, and we're ready to put a roof for 1.2 into the budget. So the fact that we don't have quotes and we haven't even evaluated what, ne what we need to do, I think we're just running to approve a budget that's unsubstantiated. And this, um, I wish all of you could have a copy of this engineering report. It's very insightful. Thank you. One, I don't think we need to waste money on this because we have a maintenance man who's been here for a long time, and there isn't much that he can ascertain walking around this building, especially since the report only tells us sometimes in, sometime in the future you should spend all this money and do all that stuff. Well, well I think we're, we know that. But right now, I, I'm saying that the budget shouldn't include these items in capital um, projects because there, there aren't any quotes. And then there's a couple other things. Um, we talked throughout the year about hospitality. We do not have a hospitality line item. We have no idea what we spend on hospitality. But it is a consistent expense. So I would like to see the budget include some dollar amount that you plan on spending next year. I mean, that hasn't been uh, identified either. And as far as programs, when I asked for an explanation, um, I was told there isn't one. But Susan, you mentioned that our programs are increasing in cost because Friends is not funding some of the expensive programs. So we kind of need some kind of data to I, understand what's I, going I did on. Tell you, I told you. I'm sorry, Tim, may I answer? Um, why don't you finish what everything you're, you want to list? Okay, and well, the point is that was a statement that you put into the budget document. So I'm just saying it would help if I could see a breakdown of what the budgets or budget costs are for programs. And I know we were able to do this when Linda Weiss was director. I mean, we received a budget with a breakdown. I mean, we had adult services, they had all of their programs, all the costs. I mean, and it was it was real straightforward. But for some reason, you don't provide that anymore. 
So again, we don't even know what the cost is, and we just have an $8.4 million budget. So that's, that's, you know, we're supposed to be about transparency, and this is also questionable. And then a couple other things. Oh, IMRF. We talked about, what's it called? Um, cash payments to employees who do not need our health coverage. So I think I, I heard something like it's $40 a pay period or $1,000 um, a year per person. Well, um, I'm looking at the uh, breakdown for these payments. It looks like we've been in IMRF for three years and four months. And forgive me, but I call this padding IMRF. To call um, cash payments that we give to employees benefits is really not accurate. And we are padding IMRF by now making them earnings so they can now be calculated for IMRF pension. But just in three years and four months, the total is 29560 And that's just dollars that were put into IMRF. Now, let's see what that's going to cost taxpayers over how many years. I mean, is it really necessary to do that? And I know we pointed out we saved money on a couple of, um, is it digital services? Instead of spending 12000 we saved, we spent 9000 So maybe we saved three grand, but here's almost 30000 Okay, and, and again, I don't see why we have to put any more money into IMRF. We're already paying for IMRF based on earnings. Why call something else earnings? So these are reasons why I think this budget is nowhere near ready to be passed. And unfortunately, during the budget meeting, you know, I couldn't even get a question out. Would it be coming a war? So I feel we have not done justice to reevaluate or evaluate this budget just once. And, you know, again, we owe it to the taxpayers who are going to be paying this bill, and we're all about transparency, so we should do this. Okay, great. Uh, thank you. Um, let's see, should we answer some of the questions first, or should we go uh, I, I'm going to lose track. You're going to lose track? All right. If you don't mind, I have right. to address. Okay. Yeah. Susan, I'm going to address. Um, uh, let's see. As for the hospitality mm -hmm. line, we talked about that at the last meeting, and I said that those expenses are part of our program expenses and part of our professional development meeting expenses. If you want them broken out, that can happen, but then you're not getting a complete picture of the program expenses. We don't so, get it now. I have no idea what the cost for a program is. Okay. I could not tell you what one of the programs cost us. Well, but, okay. So, uh, next month, I do plan on giving the board a presentation on our program strategy, an overview of the kinds of things we've had in the past, and what we're planning for the coming year. So, perhaps that will help But I'm not interested in strategy. I'm interested in costs by program. So, right. we can reassess them every year. And hospitality should be a, a, a line item of its own. It's food. It shouldn't be in professional development, and it shouldn't be in program. Well, that's like saying that construction paper used in a children's craft should have its own line Susan, item. Susan, anyone who handles the budget knows hospitality is its own line item. Okay, well, let's, so there's let's that. decide about the as a board. Yeah, uh, and then you asked about the IMRF cash payments and May I address that? I was going to ask you. May I address the cash payments? Sure. Yeah. So, um, uh, the way that I am set up is that the uh, compensation that is paid to employees, and this $40 is part of that compensation, uh, is included in their uh, box one salaries on their W-2s. Because we excuse me. voted. Excuse me. Excuse me. Yeah. Excuse me. Yeah. Excuse me. It was it was done uh, uh, from the actual start on April first, twenty. Or I'm sorry, August first, April uh, twenty sixteen. And uh, when IMRF came out to audit, they said, "Hey, you're doing this, and what we really need to do is I think it's re resolution six seventy five on on their uh, in their accounting." We need to paper this transaction with board approval to make sure that everybody understands what's going on. So we went to the board with uh, this resolution and explained it. And as a board, it was passed and it made it official. So we 
we pass that on to uh, IMRF. Okay, I have a the way, the, way the, program, the way the program works is if an employee decides to source their health insurance somewhere else, you know, parents, you know, spouse, on the Affordable Care Act exchange, we pay them $1,000. It's actually $960 um, over a year at $40 per pay period for 24 pay periods. Every year there are approximately 10 or 11 people who don't take our insurance. If they're taking single coverage, um, 10 people would cost us an $1,000. If, since they go away and get their coverage from another source, we're spending 10 and saving 90. Um, that $10,000 as a whole represents a cost to the library, to IMRF, of I'd say $550. Because it's, those are compensation dollars, you apply the contribution rate of 5.31% to IMRF, uh, for IMRF to those payments. So 5% of 10,000 is 500, 531 is $531. In time, that will multiply. Well, yeah, I guess I guess over a hundred years you no, have you know, fifty thousand dollars or right. something like that. But um, uh, so that's the story. But okay, the key is you. the key is is that the board has approved uh, that by resolution uh, sent to IMRF. Okay, the key that I brought up though. When you brought this to the board just a couple of months ago, and it was an oversight that we didn't sign documentation giving board approval to do this, I asked when did when was this initiated? You said it had to do with a previous resolution. I could not find it. I don't but know here we're gonna. I don't recall. Well, when we adopted IMRS, when did well, this? Well, yeah, actually, Carolyn. This, I'm not understanding. I understand you're not I'm understanding, not. but let me finish. This, I have, this, no, 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 no. This particular payment to employees <laughs> has been discussed by the board, and then we have made a decision to accept it. Okay. So let's not revisit so it. So then, my we've point accepted. is, this board should not have approved. In just three years, throwing another thirty thousand into IMRF. Well, that's an, uh, yeah, thank and, you for your opinion. And the fact that, that we're we saving money because some of the staff doesn't need insurance because they're covered elsewhere doesn't mean we need to just I, give I more money away. But we've already discussed this particular issue. Yes. Let's not revisit it There's, unless you have other information. Yes, so the it. information was it's actually twenty nine thousand okay. dollars, that's not just we'll, a few we'll, dollars. We'll pass on this particular item because we've already discussed and covered it. Um, those were your issues, and I think Greg and Susan has have uh, addressed those. Uh, I have no other um, items on the budget that I need to talk about. Karen? Okay. Karen? Patty? Um, the only thing pertaining to what she had asked about the uh, expense, of, I, I'm taking it as the roof and so on, is wasn't there, if I remember correctly, and I might be wrong, so I'm asking this, wasn't there where the roof was insured for a certain period of time that the company who put it on would come and do repairs? Well, it's, it's not insured. It's, it was warranty. Well, warranty. It is a 20-year warranty. A, a 20 warranty. Um, the, uh, the West Roof is, has been out of warranty, and, and we address you know, leakages and spots and so forth uh, throughout the year. The, uh, the west roof just came out of, I'm sorry, just uh, the east roof just came out of uh, warranty. So we're at the 20, uh, 20 year mark. Um, the uh, comments from, uh, from the engineers um, were along the lines of, yeah, you might get a little more life out of this. One part, one part that's a little bit better, the part that is not, uh, that is older, um, you should probably consider replacing that soon. Okay. So, it, so we decided to put, to put money in the budget, but uh, without having a full understanding of the condition of the roof, and we're going through that process now. To give you some dimensions, the roof on this building 
is, uh, in total, uh, is approximately 40,000 square feet. That's an acre. Uh, actually, an acre is about 43,000 square feet. So this is pretty close to an acre of roof. Um, now, by contrast, uh, Mr. Pula brought something to our attention that we can get a roof for $102,000 if we had an ice rink in the park district. Um, that ice rink is about 6,000 square feet. So, you know, what you would have to do is take that $100,000 and gross it up. Um, the other problem with the uh, ice rink bid is that it's a different standard than uh, it's being built to a different standard than what we're required to build to. So the insulation under the uh, rubber membrane uh, on the ice rink is an R20, uh, which is basically how how uh, big is the blanket that surrounds mm -hmm. you know that surrounds the structure. Uh, so they have an R20. Uh, specification in their bid, we need to, according to the uh, village code, uh, put in an R30. Okay. So what that involves at this point is is put, putting uh, coring the roof uh, at at points to make sure that we understand what is under it and make the appropriate measurements and and so forth and actually do uh, a more thorough investigation. Um, we in no way, shape, or form are advocating that on the strength of the information that we have so far that we spend $1.2 million. But we suggest that, uh, that the board appropriate that amount of money because um, we don't know what we're going to find yet. How soon can we find this out? Uh, it's, you know, it's, it's a process. I mean, I, you know, until and you really won't know until you go through a formal bidding process yeah, and true. release the specifications and you but know so this coring process, for example. How soon can we get that information? Uh, I wish Dave was in the room. We're we're working uh, okay. with that currently. Okay. Greg, the bid was for the park. I'm oh, sorry, not, Joe. Not Joe, 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 Mr. McCullough. Not for the Mr. McCullough. Okay. This is not public comment time. Okay. He's made a mistake, he misquoted me. It's not public comment time. Okay. Can I ask a question actually, about no, this not conversation? I, I, I want to um, continue. Actually, I wanted to say something too, and I forgot because I got flustered on the last thing. That uh, um, Greg mentioned, uh, this is this is a budget, and a budget in general is a mandate not to spend more than that. We are not mandating that the library ever <coughs> spend what we're budgeting for. Clearly, the staff uh, routinely spends less than we budget. So, you know, we're, we're looking for that to happen in the future. This is, um, as Greg said, this is an allocation to cover us in case it does cost that much, but clearly we're not looking for it to cost that much if we can. Okay. Sorry, right. sorry, Patty. Thank you. My other question is, legally, isn't there a point in time that we're supposed to have a budget set? Yes, although you, you guys do tend to do it earlier than many places so that, because you like to have the budget set at the beginning of the fiscal year so we right. know what our limits are. Many, and we used to do it in, like in August and then do the levy right afterwards. So you guys changed the schedule a few years ago and that's fine, but uh, but it doesn't have to be that way. Okay, in the future you can change it. So is there any way? just to play devil's advocate and make a few people happy, myself included, we could have the coring done to see exactly what the group condition is. We don't necessarily need the estimates, but at least if we know what's going on with the roof, you know, how long do you think that would be? Uh, I don't know. I, I, don't have a, I don't have a good answer to that. Um, but, you know, let me uh, also stress that uh, when we went to the earlier adoption of, of the budget, yes. okay, and it's usually like limits out in the fourth week of August or something like that, and mm -hmm. we generally did it at the August meeting, mm -hmm. um, and then we pulled it in to June 30th or at the right June meeting, mm -hmm. so it took 60 days out of the process essentially. Mm -hmm. um, uh, I did advise uh, the board at the time that we would have to work with estimates. You know, okay. so. So, um, and this is one of those estimates. Further, um, this is not something that we would levy for. 
this is something that comes out of the special reserve fund. Mm -hmm. yeah, it has, I, I, I understand that. Yeah, I think it's 1.2 million dollars mm -hmm. or something like that. Yes. Um, so, um, you know, if we, when we get to the point where you know uh, we get, we fully expended the uh, uh, special reserve fund, then we will transfer more money into it to cover anticipated expenses going forward. Okay, but he, you are in the process of getting that information. Okay, yeah. thank you. Thank you. Okay, um, <clears throat> so if we don't spend this 1.2 million on the roof, it just stays in the reserve fund mm -hmm. the rest of it. Um, it's not going to affect the tax money as of Shouldn't. As of now. Okay. The other thing on um, all these other items on here, if we put a hold on this, how does it affect the other items being looked at or completed? I, I don't, if we put I don't a hold think on this budget. I think that I don't think it, it stops anything. Okay. Or interferes with anything. Okay. It just means we have to do it by August meeting. Well, it's statutorily. Yeah. yeah, that's that's what I want to know. Legally, it's like when do we get Thursday, to the It's like the fourth Thursday in August okay. or, or, or something. You know, you know how the laws express. Mm -hmm. Okay, the other thing I wanted to mention, um, everybody's always talking about programming. It really <coughs> aggravates me. Because Susan sends this out every month. This is a list of every check and every payment that goes out. You don't like this when it says programming, this amount of money for the end this No, day. it's really difficult to discuss well, budgeting with you. Excuse me. It is. It's just okay, is this a polite comment? Well, because you're, you're, you're ridiculing me that I'm not satisfied with the general it question. It was a general question. Information. Never mind. I, um, I'm finished with the question. Because it's, a, it's in the month of your report. Um, and that so is not what I'm requesting at all. Okay. So I'm sorry if you're upset about it, but that is not how you review spending in a budget. When I talk about a program, I mean each Thank you. program. Thank you for your input. Thanks. Okay. So just for clarifications for myself, because I missed last month's meeting, um, I just want to reiterate so that in my own self, I am clear. The levy is still remaining flat. Well, okay, you, yeah. we haven't it's had that meeting, November, and, that's, and that's in November. Right, but that's, that was our thought process, right? That the levy is remaining flat, flat and so and even and though and that it's looking that I, 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 I can't, I can't say that we've articulated that in any way. I thought that we kind of talked about the budget. We've talked about the budget. We haven't we talked about the levy. Oh, now. okay. All right. Okay, so that but so the levy does right now, fund the budget, the budget is... The budget is increasing, sure. Okay, so, all right. Okay, so let me, let me sure. just here. So the budget, though, was very similar to what it was last year. It's just that because of our special projects. Correct. So is that a better way to say it? Yes. Okay, so really, okay, I won't look ahead because we can't, but it's looking like it would be in my eyes. <laughs> so, yeah, let me just hear. Okay, so, all right, so I know that that's okay, so maybe that's not the right question, but that's what I'm looking at. We're not really raising anything because we're just raising because of these projects that need to be done because our building is failing. Well, I wouldn't say that the building is well, failing. Well, no, we but I mean, need improvements. There are maintenance items that need, items that need to be uh, addressed at some Coming point. out of warranty and then some other items that need to be updated mm -hmm. by the base by this list okay mm -hmm. all right thank you for that okay however um with the roof because it seems like it's such a hot topic among the community right now okay with people that have come here today um we are in the process we, uh, we don't have the quotes right now but like you said we're in the process of getting the information and gathering we don't know how much it will cost, but we want to budget it so that we can actually do it, mm -hmm. right? Okay. So, 
when the when the process goes, when we start getting the bids, we then as a board then have to look at all of them and approve according to <coughs> how we look at all proposals. Yeah. Or, you know. So in this current fiscal year, uh, we had we had an item on the uh, on the budget for two hundred and fifty dollars to replace the children. I'm sorry, two hundred and fifty thousand. Thank you. I wish it was two hundred. <laughs> and um, you know, so we put that into the budget, and then when we actually spec'd it and we did the bidding, uh, we ended up with a price that was just under a hundred and fifty. Okay, so you know what we had going into the budgeting was advice that this was uh, this needed to be addressed. We had seen a maintenance cost spike. Um, as we were replacing, you know, different motors and valves and things of that nature uh, in the chiller. And uh, uh, so when we budgeted, we didn't know what it would cost. Now, you'd say, well, geez, you padded it, you know, 250 and you paid 150 right? Um, well, if you remember, the high bid was about $280,000. The low bid was just under 150 so, you know, if there's all sorts of qualified contractors out there that are willing to work a little bit harder or not work as hard and, you know, submit, you know, submit a quote, uh, I would imagine that if uh, they were a lot busier during, during this time period, that we might have not gotten the lower quotes and we would have ended up paying, you know, much closer to 250. But as, you know, luck would be out it, we were able to get a reasonable you know, reasonable price in a competitive situation. Right, and we still have to rely on those bids that come in. That's right. And That's right. Okay. And, right. and the board, you know, uh, quite frankly, in a bidding uh, circumstance, the board is always within their right to say, I don't like any of these bids. Let's try it again. You know, let's try to cast the net wider. Mm -hmm. um, you know, but, you know, we've been, I think, pretty successful in the last, uh, you know, several years. Mm -hmm. Uh, getting decent bids for the work that we need done. But just to clarify, that you can't send out an identical bid. No. Have to change the bid. Mm -hmm. So, so we're still in the process. It's the one point two is again the the estimate or a a, a high wall. Is that, I guess, the yeah, way you say it? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, and anything over $5,000, we still have to approve. Right. So we're still in control of yeah, the well, expenditure. Anything, anything over $5,000 and anything over uh, $25,000 has to go through the state bidding process. Right. Under the state procurement act. Right. So, um, you know, which is, you know, kind of a double, you know, I mean, so we open it up and, mm -hmm. and we tell everybody what we want and right. then we have to take, you know, information from anybody who is qualified and who wants to bid. We even take the unqualified bids, but, you know, we go right. through a qualification process to make sure that they do have the resources and so forth in order to do the job. Right. And that they are paying, uh, they are paying a, a competitive wage and they do have insurance and all the things that, you know, that are required, required in a uh, bidding situation. Okay, and then I just have one last question. So we have the west, the east, and then there was one other part? The copper tower. The copper, okay, yeah. great. And none of, this, so, none of this involves the copper and uh, the tower. Okay, so the west and the east are both out of warranty. Correct. The entire okay. roof is out of warranty. Okay, so in my eyes, and this is just my opinion, as a board member for the village, um, for the public, not for the village, for the Mass Public Library, anything out of warranty, especially our roof. And with the the spots I see on all the ceiling tiles in here, with everything, I don't want any responsibility of our roof caving in. And I think it's due diligence to actually put this aside, go through the full process, yeah. and then vote on what's correct. So. I agree to um, keep that in. That's my point. Joe. Um, for starters, so in my understanding, we have not gone out for quotes and we don't plan to. We're going to just wait for the bidding process. I um, think the quote 
the bidding process is to get the invoice. Well, quotes don't, I, I, if you have people come in and submit quotes, you don't have to be obligated to accept them. A bid, once you right. once you submit a bid, it's it's almost like an agreement. But my point is, I, I, I am totally against 1.2 or 1. Point whatever million dollars for anything, not having quotes to justify the cost. But back to your point about noticing um, some marks or something on the ceiling, um, you know, how do we know that wasn't from a previous problem since according to this engineering report, there is no need to replace this roofing right now. So I'm trying to figure out where are we getting this, 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 this need because we're out of warranty, but they don't see the condition of the roofs to be necessarily needing to be replaced right now. But yet we're going to put 1.2 million, you know, and just close our eyes. That is irresponsible. I, I just can't, I can't just validate that. Right. And the fact that we haven't even asked for quotes. And I don't know, I don't see what the big deal is that you used to be able to have your budget completed in August. Now we have it completed in July. All that means is you start soon enough so you're prepared. I mean, I don't understand why it's always so complicated for us. But it's not a reason not to have quotes. It, but that's just my take on it. Thank right. you. Thank you. One more go around. Karen, anything? Uh, I was just going to say, I do recall why we switched or why we wanted to switch over to guessing our budget earlier. It really seems to me to be a better process to actually have your budget in place before you start the year. It tells the staff before the beginning of the year, this is how many dollars you have for the year, and you don't start the fiscal year without really knowing what the budget is. So I've always thought it's appropriate to pass your budget before the beginning of the year. And while legally we may be able to wait, I just don't think it is the best policy to do that. Um, and so that's why we switched over to getting the budget in place before the beginning of the fiscal year. Um, and, and again, I've always understood the budget sort of to be like the staff's contract with the board in terms of we will not spend more than this. This is the this is the ceiling. This is the top. Not we are going to spend this much, but this is the most we're going to spend for any one of these items. For instance, last year we had a fairly large amount of personal special reserve because we thought we were going to be able to get some through some projects that we were never able to get to. So we didn't spend that money. That money just stayed in the bank. And that will happen this year too if for some reason or other we don't get to all these projects or they don't cost nearly as much as we think they're going to cost, the money will just stay in the bank. And so that's why I think that um, the budget as written is appropriate. Certainly, when it comes time to actually look at those bids, we're going to be scrutinizing those bids. Those bids. We're going to be looking should. at them. And we should, as we must. Yeah. Because of the dollar amount, we can't just get quotes. We have to get chances over it, because it's over the uh, required uh, dollar amount. So we will be scrutinizing those bids, and we will either be accepting the lowest responsible bidder, or we may decide not to accept any of them at all, because that will be our option at that time. But that's not a decision we're making tonight, exactly how much we're going to be spending for that roof. That's a decision that we'll be making down the road. And that's all I have to say about that. Great. Yeah. Okay. Um, my concern is since we have to vote on how we're handling the levy situation, which I personally don't think needs to be raised. Yes, that's well, cool. I know, I'm just yeah. saying for November, I think we should try and have these bids done before we have that meeting so that we get a better idea of what we're looking at as far as possible expense. Okay, so um, you're you're connecting a capital expenditure with other stuff to, I understand. to the levy and what we have is money in the bank mm -hmm. already set aside mm -hmm. uh, for big repairs and, and so forth. So this does not this does not uh, play into your decision on the levy. Now okay. having said that, if we had no money in the bank, it would be a it'd be a far different story because we would have to raise the money as a matter of fact we, we probably, given the size of, of, of the ask in the budget, we would be in such trouble that we would have to go far beyond the 1.9% uh, on the, uh, the state of Illinois CPI. We're not doing that. 
Yeah, of course not. Of course, because we have we have this money set aside in order to in order to do it. So when you think about when you think about the tax levy, it's not it's not good to think about these capital type uh, expenditures. I understand what you're saying. Yeah, it's true. I'm just to me, the majority of the people that were here sounded like that's what they thought. We were going to raise their taxes more. Um, okay. But I still would, if possible, like to get the bids sooner yeah, sure. than later. Yeah. Okay. Can you um, address the fact that one of our residents said he was against this $1.5 million because we should put it in a capital assessment plan. Yeah, I don't understand that. Mm -hmm. it, and it's not 1.5, it's 1.2. I agree. So, uh, so the number's off a little bit. Um, and do we have money in something called the special reserve account, uh, which may be the same thing that you know, he's referring to. Um, but beyond yeah, that, uh, I. I just don't understand. I think there was uh, a comparison between the roof needing to be repaired right now, so we need 1.2 million or whatever that number is, compared to the fact that according to these reports, the roof is really not in need of repair. So why does that money even need to be included in the budget? No, when it's not something you won't need for a longer time. And at one time. During one of our meetings, and I don't know who it was that said, this increase is really one half of one percent. What can you explain that? The operating increases. Uh, yeah, that's what yeah, it That's it. Yeah. That's how it's gonna say. Okay. It's the operating yeah. expense yeah. that you were right. talking about. Right. Yeah, yeah. the capital yeah. projects are very different than yeah. capital and yeah. this is different. Linda, anything else? Um, I, I don't think so. I think I'm good. Thank you very much. Okay. So, uh, Diane, you want to take a roll? Oh, I miss Karen. Karen? Yes. Carolyn? No. Diane? Yes. Patty? Yeah. Linda? Yes. Yes. <clears throat> All right, next item. Do I hear a motion to approve that the Niles Main District Library continue to participate in the non-resident library card Illinois program and charge an annual fee of $291 based on the formula established by the Illinois State Library? Right. Second. Yeah. All right, uh, Susan, you want to remind us what this is for? Yeah, this is uh, for people that live in an area that is not paying any tax dollars to any library. So there are pockets of them in Glenview. There's a little bit in unincorporated displays. Um, though most of unincorporated displays does pay taxes to the library district, but there's a pocket that does not. Mm -hmm. And so those people can come to a library and buy a card for their family for basically what their taxes would have been. And every year you have to calculate that based on the state's formula that is spelled out here in the, in the memo. So this year, $291. Can they go to another library? You know, there are really complicated rules surrounding yeah. where you have to go to get the card, but yes, once you have the card, it's worth it. And for the whole family. I know a little bit about this because we've done this for several <laughs> years. Yeah. And I remember the cost being higher before. It Has can't be. Uh, it, it, um, it, I remember it being around three something. It, it could, yeah, it could have been at some point because we're close to the three there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It all depends on what the operating budget was on um, particular year because um, our population hasn't changed since the census. So mm -hmm. that's the only thing that's changed is the operating budget. All right, since Diane and Patty screwed up my system. I'm Anybody sorry, else I'm have sorry. anything to say on this one? I had a question. <laughs> Oops. Um, you mentioned um, 
The unincorporated areas are Glenview and Desplaines. And then you mentioned Desplaines. There are Desplaines residents who pay our library taxes. Most of the unincorporated Desplaines residents do pay taxes to this library. Are there any other areas that are outside of Niles where they do pay taxes for us? Uh, unincorporated Glenview as well. So that one is what? Well, okay. So that we have we have areas of Glenview who pay taxes and areas of Glenview who don't pay taxes. And they're Correct. eligible for this, is that Correct. Right? Okay. Yeah. All right, thank you. Okay. Oh, I have one yeah. last question. I, did I see Northfield on a list? Uh, well, the Northfield Township is the top triangle there, and so that sometimes gets mixed up, but it's not the town of Northfield, it's Northfield Township. So there may be people in that area who are in our library district. There are people, yeah. That's where some of the big condos are, or okay. whatever they are, okay. apartment buildings. But it's in Triangle Vera. Oh, okay. Oh, is that what it is? Okay. Yeah, but it's on corporate Glenview. Oh, oh, oh. That's very confusing with those oh, numbers. Yeah. So so one real quick question then. If those people are in unincorporated Glenview, then they have to pay this fee for a car. It's not because they're in unincorporated Glenview, it's because it, it, that pocket actually is in the district and they do pay taxes to us. But there are some okay. there are some little pockets that I can kind of point out real quickly. They're kind of over more. Well, actually, Athena probably knows much better than I do, but it's it kind of this, there's an area over here, and they would have to be contiguous with the library district to ever even become part of the district. So there's some over here and here, and then there's more in displays going in that direction. But this, but in our, the ones that can pay to us are over here and here, and there's a little bit behind Apollo School. Okay, they can pay to us, so they're in our district. Uh, most of them are in our district, but those bits I was pointing out there, very crudely, are not paying taxes to anybody. Oh, okay, all right. Gotcha. Yeah. They were never they were never annexed into the district during the period that they were doing a lot of annexing, and they still could be annexed if that was a, something the board wanted to pursue. All right, thank you. Gary, you have I was just wondering, oh, just ballpark figure, how many families even do this? Ask it because she is the head of our patron services. Oh, five families? Yeah, exactly. Okay. So, all that discussion? Sure. Okay. Uh, five yeah. Well, most of those people live <laughs> closer to other libraries, so they're not going to sure. track all the way down yeah. here. All right. I think we're all set in there. Payne, would you please take a roll? Yes. Carolyn? Yes. Yes. Daddy? Yes. Linda? Yes. Yes. Uh, no, need, does anybody need a break? No. No, please, let's finish. It's getting late. Okay, we'll go through this real quick. Sorry. Real quick. All right. So let me. Okay. Thank you, Chair. It's real quick. Not any motions to approve resolution 1901, account resolutions, uh, certificate for treasury management services, government entity. Uh, do I have a motion? So moved. Um, Greg, you want to just give us a real quick one on this? Uh, sure. Um, uh, <coughs> every two years, uh, we do something like this in response to uh, the changing complexion of the board. Uh, we said a little more straightforward. We have uh, new signers on the uh, on the bank account, so sure. what we need to do is formalize it through this resolution. And, uh, to the bank and uh, make sure that they have all the appropriate information, appropriate assignments, so that our assets are safe. Right. Anything you want to go around? Anybody have any questions? Well, I, just, I just wondered about if there, uh, I hear they're closing all the locations. Uh, is mm -hmm. this still going to be convenient for us to bank here? Do we need to move to a different bank? Uh, we're keeping an eye on that. Yeah. 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 So that coincidentally, this week, yeah. we're in the news, and, and quite a few in this. Yeah, yeah I, well, they worked with uh, MD Financial, and I'm not, I'm not clear if the if the branches that they're closing are MD Financial or Fifth Third. Um, closing MD Financial. I, well, I, I, I know that there's some of that because of duplicate, duplicate uh, market presence. Mm -hmm. um, I, I also know that the branch um, that we go to over here on Oakton, is in uh, one of the new tips, and they're looking at 
you know, knocking, uh, knocking that building down uh, for the kind of for Is that the one project. at the dumpster in Waukegan? No, it's the one right here in Oakland. Oh, oh Denver. Oh, right. Like a block or so. Right. Yeah. It's right over there. Are you asking? They're closing them. Or you're asking? Uh, I know they're knocking it down. Oh, yeah. Yes. Yeah. And they're selling that building. Now, I don't know if they'll reconstitute the bank in, um, on the ground floor of, of the project that they're developing or not. Um, but, you know, once that happens, you know, we'll be forced to go to uh, another location. So, I, as I said, we're monitoring it. Um, we're satisfied with the service that we get um, and uh, the fees that we pay. So. Anybody else have anything in this one? Say no. Great. Take a roll, please. Karen? Yes. Carolyn? Yes. Diane? Yes. Annie? Yes. Linda? Yes. Yes, yes. Yes, thank you. Uh, can we take a, uh, a break for a minute? Yeah. Uh, can I call it at uh, 9 31? All right, we're all back in. So uh, I am calling the regular meeting back to order at 10:10. I have to figure out how to do this. I got my books on my desk. I just wrote um, there. Oh, okay. Yeah, just call the names. All right. Okay, order. Carolyn. Mm -hmm. No. Well, you're not going to do the right order. It doesn't. Okay. Linda. Here. Diane. Here. Here. Patty. Here. Yeah. Here. Yeah. Here. Yeah. Here. Yeah. Ten. Ah, uh, here. Okay, yes. so this is to resume. Yes. Ten ten. Did you we did not do it. No, no, we're not doing that. Okay. All right. So I'm making a motion. Uh, Are you making it or are you asking? I'm making the motion. That's what I'm going to do. I'm going to make the motion. Is that okay? Yeah. Can I make the motion? No. All right. Do I have a motion to uh, provide for a raise for uh, Susan Lemke's salary to uh, of $2,000? And provide for a bonus of two thousand dollars. So second. Okay. okay, so that was Karen and the Patty. Yes, ma'am. It raised two thousand to provide bonus two thousand. Correct. Right? Okay. Yes. All right. Um, I guess that's it. Okay. Call the roll. Okay, Carolyn. Um, no. Linda. Yes. Diane. Yes. Patty. Yes. Karen? Yes. Yes. Do, do we also need a motion to um, set for a Susan Lucky goals that are set forth? I don't know if we've done that in the past. I think we did have a motion for that. I don't know. Maybe they believe they just told me. It wasn't good. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. But the goals are, I think, are European consensus that they're supposed to be. Yeah, I believe so. All right, so um, if there's nothing else, we can move to the other portion of the meeting, correct? Right. All right, and uh, I have uh, something that I'd like us all to review. Um, that would be great. So I've made, I, I reviewed the, the bylaws uh, of the board, and um, I made a number of changes to them. Really, it's to my, in, in, no, it's my opinion that it's a lot of housekeeping. Carolyn, before you look, don't look yet. Don't look. Don't look. I want to, I want to explain it before right, you ask that. Yeah. Um, it's a lot of housekeeping, so I'm hoping that uh, we don't have a lot of discussion on it. We really shouldn't. Uh, it, it all seems fairly straightforward. And I created a document for our trustee positions. Let's not look until I finish talking about it. Thank you. Okay. So, Tim, are these bylaws? There are two is documents. Here. Document? One document is the bylaws, okay. and another document is a brand new uh, document that I, I created for our, our procedures, our board meeting procedures, so that we can hopefully be more collaborative rather than combative. And I, you know, it would be wonderful. If we work a little bit better as a board. Can, can they, you know, this is my proposal. But, you know, we'll, I want us to redo it. I want to take you know and the comments and changes. Anything you need. Uh, assigned as a board, so the bylaws uh, need a, a majority of five uh, votes for it, but the trustee manual doesn't. It's just it's it's a work it's a document for us how we use our our tech. So 
That being said, take it with you. Um, uh, go with God and uh, review it for our next meeting. Possibly we can get through it in our July meeting. Let's see how it works. We may have a lot to do in the July meeting. I don't know if it would be great if we can get through it. So it's your copy. Take it and review it. Uh, the other thing, yeah, uh, uh, any questions on that? You know, I know you haven't looked at it, so we're not going to. Uh, it shows what was changed. Correct. Okay. That okay. was changed. Proposed. Proposed. Yes. Okay. It shows, okay. shows so what I can at least compare. Absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. Yes. Okay. These, are, these are all proposed. You know, nothing okay. is. Okay. Sure. We, we all agree collectively on what did change. Okay. So we have uh, uh, Dennis's position to replace. Um, Let's talk about it. Um, I'd like to go through the process that we did the last time of putting out uh, a notice in the papers and putting out a notice on the website for a letter of intent. I think we called it an application last time. I don't like the word application because there really is no application. Uh, what we accept is somebody's letter of intent. Or interest. Wasn't it a letter, letter of interest. interest letter of interest. Said, that would yeah. be great. Okay. Uh, letter of interest as to wanting to participate on the board or joining the board. Now, uh, uh, Dennis's position uh, he has two year, uh, four years left, but according to the, the, the state statutes, we will re be replacing him for two years until the next election. Oh, it does work. Then. That's how it works. And oh, then the next right. election, we'll have uh, three positions for six years and one position for two years. That's what we'll, we'll be able to elect. Is that how that comes? So that's how that works. Four positions. So before four positions will be all over. But I thought when he when he goes up for election, it's a six-year term. No, you it's for the completion of his term. But we have to. And he has to be elected after we appoint him. We appoint it up until the next election, and then I at that know. point, yeah, you that's how it is. Goes back to the voters. Yeah. Yeah. So how are they going to know he's two years? Well, it's going to have to stay on the thing. Oh, okay, gotcha. Yeah. So right. technically, I think the way I understand it on the ballot, they'll have the six-year terms, and then the two-year term would be a separate. Correct. Yeah. 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 Because, yeah. Go ahead. Yeah. So, okay. So yeah. So, but the, the point being, we have to replace for the next, uh, until the next election. So uh, I think we should follow that procedure where we uh, go out for uh, those letters of interest. And um, now, we don't necessarily have to interview. I mean, it's up to really us how we do this. Um, if we, you know, if we, we, we find somebody that collectively we, we, we've known in the past or we've liked or whatever the situation is, we can um, accept that person. If we get a lot of interest, I, you know, and I'm and I'm really open to suggestions on how we should go about this. Uh, it would be great if we could resolve it by July meeting. Uh, if we got a number, clearly, if we got 50 resumes, that'd be an, an issue. But if we only get three, I mean, letters. If we only get three or four, then we, as a board, can can review those at the July meeting and make a decision. Uh, but but uh, you know, it's up to us how we want to go about doing this. I wouldn't. I don't really want to drag it out for ever. Yeah, I can't. Suggestion: sure. um, We should be transparent, and we should at least take five minutes to interview the people, rather than say the board decided. Sure. Mm -hmm. It doesn't look good. You no, know. That's yeah, we that's fine. Right. Then, then we can, and it really has to be at the August meeting, because we couldn't, we couldn't, we couldn't decide. All. Sure. No, I you know, unless we do, we could do this. We could make the deadline say three weeks from now. Mm -hmm. And then we, as a, a board, review those resumes over the email and ask those people to come at the July meeting. You could do that. Okay. Right. Yeah, I see. So then we'll still get, we'll accomplish it in July. Yeah, that's right. fine. To give people about three weeks to submit a letter of interest, mm -hmm. put that on the web page, and do whatever else we did in the past to let people yeah, know about it. I'll look it up. And it up um, the deadline would be, say, a week before the board meeting or you know, mm -hmm. roughly that. And then you could shoot all the letters of interest out to us and mm -hmm. schedule, schedule those um, uh, interviews for the July meeting. Let's say, assuming there's no more than five. Okay, that's, that's the piece. If there, that's if there are more than five, then I'm not saying we would interview them, but 
I don't know that we would have the time to. We have to decide that. I think. What we're going well, to. if we all get a copy of the resumes, we could voice our opinion as to which ones we want to interview. You don't. You don't have to. There's no law that so you have to interview no, every person. You, you only have to be able to communicate that to me, though. Correct. You wouldn't, yeah. And I don't know that I want to be like it wouldn't be transparent to the yeah. rest of you mm -hmm. what you know. So that you is might true. Think I was filtering through the resume. So that is very that true. One. Right. I, I would just assume say as long as there's five or less, we're going to get them all. All right. And if there are more than five, then at the July meeting we have to decide what we're going to do. With that. In terms of maybe we would or interview them a lot, or maybe we'd find some other way to. Would we have back. to have an extra meeting? Well, Break right. it up to well, August, I, maybe, and then design right. it in August. I don't know. You know, it's it's a local community, and we just want to look. We want to make sure we look like we're giving everybody the same yes. chance. Sure. Yes. So maybe we don't want to interview too many at each meeting because right. we'll be here till eleven o'clock. So, so maybe we'll just. So do we want to set a, a, a deadline of? Um, say the, the weekend before the meeting, uh, yeah, it did, bring definitely. all the resumes the and interest yeah. at the July meeting, we collectively decide who we want to interview, and then interview them at the August meeting. And would that be closed session that we decide, or would that no, be open session? That would be open, right? open. The, the conversation would be closed session, I believe. And the interview? Yeah. The interview. Uh, the interview also was closed session last yeah. time. Yeah. Was, it is no, kind of was, yeah. Didn't the interview an open session? Yeah. I don't think so. I don't think so. I think they're... No? All right. Maybe I'm confused with But I'm saying as far as discussing the applications, that would be closed session, wouldn't it? And then we would vote or say who we're voting for who we want. Yeah, we can't talk about it. You can't talk about individuals. Yeah. No. I thought we were going to review those on through email. Right? No, we decided no, not to no. that. We couldn't collectively do it. Oh, okay. Sorry, sorry. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 You, know, you, could, you actually uh, could submit to Susan, like, if there's five person days or ranking one to five, and then she could tally uh, all of the votes, so to speak, and come up with the top three or something like that, and then share the rankings with everybody who may be assured. Yeah, let's not do that. Yeah. Okay. You yeah. know what? I would just assume give everyone yeah. an interview. Yeah. Like and, just, you know, um, it doesn't have to be a long interview. We can make no. interviews really short. It could be like sure. 10 minutes. Yeah. Or, I'd like to work five last time. Yeah. Wow. Because yeah. we yeah. actually have a drum up there. Well, that's the thing. We do need, you know, collectively, you know, individually go out there and try to find people who are going to be interested in being board members. Because everybody I ask says, no way do I want to be a board member. Except for Diane. Why do you yeah, think of that? I think it would be cool. <laughs> you, <laughs> you work out. So, okay, what did, what did we decide? Stay away from the analog of the video. Whatever. Where, where did we okay, so fall? Are, are we going to review the resumes together on the July meeting and then go for the August meeting? Oh, so what is the deadline going to be for them to submit? Well, that depends on when, what we want to yeah. do. I mean, I would think it would be by... What? Yeah, go ahead. No, no, go ahead. No, I would think that it would be before the July, July. meeting. Mm -hmm. yes. And then, because that's going to take time for it to be actually in the paper, right? Because we're going to do it in the paper. Yeah, we have to do it. Right? So then it's going to take a little time for it to get in print. And then give them at least, what, like a two week? You know, I don't even know if we put it in the paper. Still, we did here. Not like a notice. We'll send a press release. Yeah. What is it? What is the difference between a press release? Well, you send a press release. You, know, you send a press release to the paper, then it's up to the editors how they want to uh, report it. Oh, because they can do it online. On well, their side generally the way the journal that. works, if it's online, it finds its way into the into, into the, the uh, into the paper. I know. But they can push it out through social media as well. Right. Oh yeah. Okay. And All that's right. what we would do. Okay. Uh, you know, we, we would do social media and then a front right. page of the okay. website. Okay. But we would suppose well, we do it the same way we did it before. Yeah. We would. Uh, we're shooting to have somebody by August or to vote on. I thought by August. August. You know, can't we still have some? If you're gonna do this a week, I mean, you're gonna have a deadline. You said before the July meeting. Can't we? If we get six, then we're gonna interview three in July and three in August. Can we pull that off? 
I mean, what, what are we going to do? Evaluate these? Well, we need to decide when, when we get the letters, uh, and if they give us a resume or something, we as a group should mm -hmm. decide which ones we want to talk to. We don't have to talk to every person who gives but us. But if a there's letter. just five or. Well, yeah, but let's say there's ten, or there's twenty. Right. Or let's just okay. say we can we can decide. No, you know, we want to see these three people like anybody else that's that's hiring right. someone. I, I think last time you asked some questions. I have to go back and look. Yeah, I think you had a few questions. We did have 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 a few questions. Is there a way to once we get the resumes that? You can put them all in a folder for each one and come and get them. Absolutely. Yeah, like them. sure. That's and then we fun. would be able to see them before the meeting. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Uh, I mean, unless you send them to an email. Like well, I mean, I, I can, can send them out. out to them inside inside with your email. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. Get my hard copy. Because I'd like to put them in the board right? Well, maybe we'll be lucky. Yeah, yeah but then we can make a decision to record them. Well, I mean, yeah, get it going. Yeah, we could put them in an envelope. Physically in the shirt. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, because I guess we really don't feel we'll make a decision until the July time meeting. Okay, so what did we do? I think we said, we yes, <laughs> was, I think we're, we're going to put out the notice. Yeah. We're going Letter to solicit uh, letters of interest for the July meeting. At the July meeting, we'll have an executive session where we review these letters and we decide on who we want to interview. We interview these people at the August meeting. And I think we can probably make a decision at the August meeting. Yes. Yes, that's good. Are we all okay with that? Okay. So those we'll interview good. in August. We'll interview in August. Five or less interview uh, in August, right? Correct. Would we want to inter like have a special board meeting and just do it prior so they can start? We can just say in July at the July. You meeting. know, I'm okay with that, but I had a hard time getting people to yeah. do the special meeting. I mean, if you guys want a special meeting, I'm okay with it. July is horrible. But. It didn't seem to work out. Do you want me to send yeah. some more uh, <laughs> suggestions of dates? Uh, I'm cool in August. Yes, yes our family is gone. Do we want to have, like, we want to have an early <laughs> August meeting for this? Like, you know, the, the, well, it's not the just but then, but then we can actually have someone in our August meeting. We That's what that. I'm thinking. If we, well, but if we, we decide, in our let's just keep it up in the air. Yeah, we'll see what we, we can get. decide in July. Yeah. 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 We can yeah. get everyone right. ready. We get so, read. So, 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 nice. yeah. Uh, yeah. Today's the 19th. The next meeting is on the 17th. If it's a three week time period, then you, you probably count that counting. The 19th, you probably have to have everything in hand by the 11th. You know, in terms, in terms of. Well, I'm saying that, that since we're not going to review the resumes until the actual meeting, we could put that deadline, say Saturday, oh, okay. before the meeting. Right? Then that's right. Well, 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 you, you, if you're getting them by board packet, it needs to be the Friday. It needs. They need to have gotten their Maybe Thursday. Thursday. The Friday. Friday, the Friday board 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 board. Board. Which yeah. is like one more day. Yes. The day, the deadline is the day before it needs to be yeah. in the packet for us. Correct. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. As it turns out. All right, and I will send everything to you before I start posting and stuff so that you can make sure it's all on. All right, and then email us if something is going amiss with our plan. <laughs> Whatever, that is. Well, I guess Whatever our plan is. Yeah, right? <laughs> Was there anything else? Uh, that is it for my two other. Is anybody else? Karen, anything on it? Patty, anything on it? No. Diane, anything? No. Linda, anything? Absolutely not. Carolyn, anything? <laughs> no. All right. Good. See, I want everybody to have an equal opportunity here. All right. I will now entertain a motion to adjourn the meeting. Second. Great. Great. Diane, please take the roll. You said second. Me, Linda. Linda. Okay, Linda. Okay. Carolyn? Yes. Linda? Yes. <laughs> Diane? Yes. Patty? Uh, yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Yes. Ten. Yes. 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 Yes